I'm going to have to pause this other one. Oh, you're good. good. Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 60 of Chatting with Nuts, another uh, milestone coming, another one that's going to go past. And there's only one person I can think of celebrating milestones with for this show, and that is my good friend, always, always excited to be here, <laughs> Alan from the Library of Alexandria. How are yeah, you? I, I'm, really, I'm really glad to be here as your fifth most popular guest. So, I think you're three. I think you're three. Nope. Nope. Fifth most popular guest after, let me see. Oh, the library ladder, um, Murphy Napier, Philip Chase, Bookborn, and oh, hold on, Steven Erickson. I mean, so it's so I'm Erickson. actually sixth, the sixth most popular guest. Six is a good number, though. So glad everyone showed up to watch this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G team stream. Yeah, I think it's G, right? I hope. Yeah. Yeah, I you're G. So you're a G man. That's, that's all so, of these, all of these people, act, all of these people acting like they're, they're our friends here in the chat. Um, and they're like, Oh, hold on. Let me go watch these other videos like 20 times each so I can drive up the view count. Oh no, no. But we really love when Alan and Jimmy talk. We love that. That's our favorite liars. <laughs> so how about that one? Uh, I mean, if you think 45, about it, 5,000 views on the library ladder episode, 45,000 views. Really? Do y'all think that that conversation was, I don't know, five times as good as any conversation that me and Jimmy have? Bridger says, he says the A team is here. <laughs> no, no, Bridger. You're, you are the A team by like 30,000. <laughs> That video um, has been recommended almost a million times on YouTube. Which oh, I is... know. People would much rather watch people that aren't me talk. I learned <laughs> that. I know that from my channel. <laughs> I think uh, I think you've been doing good, though, man. You had the Daniel Abraham interview, which, by the way, I'm, I'm still halfway through because I keep having to do Oh, let spoilers. me tell you, that blew my channel up. Talking about the incredibly popular uh, solo artist, Daniel Abraham. I, I can't get... Like, I can't walk down the street without people wanting to talk to me about the Long Price Quartet or perhaps Age of Ash. It's like, oh, my <laughs> God, dude, you're that guy that reviewed Daniel Abraham, famous author of Age of Ash and Blade of Dream. <laughs> I love the Age of Ash, perhaps. <laughs> oh, you're still the only positive review I've heard for that book. Oh, God. What's up, Nick? Good to see you, man. Oh, God. Well, you got me already teared up <laughs> just imagining someone walking up to you, not only recognizing you, but then also being a fan of like Long Price Quartet. I mean, that look, just... anyway, so y'all, y'all, y'all got y'all got Bridger in the chat. Um, Hopefully, Philip and Murphy will join soon. And so then really, you can just have me on in the background like I'm a rerun of Cheers while you guys talk to the people who you really want to talk to. <laughs> Evie says uh, you and Bridger should talk Long Price Quartet one on one. I think that'd be excellent. Has Bridger read Long Price Quartet? If that's Bridger has read everything. <laughs> well, but he then, owns every book and has read every book. And that's why thirty thousand more people than. Oh, sorry. I acting like I'm acting like any of our our uh, episodes have fifteen thousand views. Sorry, I'm going off of Murphy's uh, one. So that must be why he has forty thousand more views than any video that we've that we've done. I mean, if you think about the total of views of all the times that we've been on, I think it's probably that's the story of my life. Working way more, um, putting in way more hours than than most people I know for actual less productivity. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's it's called being a grinder, Alan. OK, that's, that's awesome, uh, Bridger, that you've read Long Price Quartet. That's fantastic. Well, another thing, Bridger, I do know Library Letter loves is he enjoys economics in like his Lord. books and he likes uh quicksilver by neil stevenson is one that he recommended i picked it up the other day and i told him that he should check out kj parker books i think he would be a kj parker fan oh uh, for because sure. because read, kj uh, parker is just so intelligent the folding, knife. the folding knife deals with econ yeah i had a feeling i think i actually recommended that to him either on stream or maybe during one of the uh kingsguard hangouts i do um but i know i definitely recommended him kj parker because it seems like you two actually have a pretty good overlap in things that you appreciate in books. 
and I like economics too, to be yeah. honest. I, I would actually want to read the folding knife probably more than any of the other KJ Parker stuff. Okay. So I can't hang out with, I can't hang out with people who overlap with my tastes that are 30,000 views more popular because then it's like, I've been supplanted. Like it, I'll just be subsumed into the ether. <laughs> or it'll bring. No, you my only source of identity is the fact that I like crap that no one else likes without that. I have nothing. Oh, hold on. I did want to say this. I didn't want to start with this. You know who I hate? <laughs> Brandon Sanderson. I wanted to say that. That I don't I don't like Brandon Sanderson. Not just as an author. I don't like him as a person. <laughs> Are you <laughs> He's kidding, folks. He's kidding. <laughs> Before you comment below, he's kidding. Brandon Sanderson has been persecuted enough, Alan. Okay. You know what? I've just declared a jihad on uh, Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Brandon. I uh, I watched his recent podcast and really enjoyed it. Of uh, essential, uh, what is it? Intentionally blank. Oh my god! Where gosh. he talked about I his top. I can't five. believe you were able to watch that. I thought it was really good. He talked about like the top five. Oh, I see what you did there. Uh, <laughs> he talked about his top five uh, best living fantasy authors. He had a little bit of a criteria, and it was it was interesting to hear him talk about it. His co-host. I don't know who that guy is. I assume he works with Brandon. He Isn't was just picking dude. That's all. That's going to start writing Cosmere novels. Ooh, I can't wait to see what the next planet is. Oh, I is bet they him? have the same kind of dad humor they have on every other planet. Wait, is that him? Is that the guy? I don't bloody know, Jimmy. Okay. Well, he do yeah he does I, that. Do you think that I follow Sanderson around and know who his flunkies are? Fair enough. I'm not in. The, you need to ask. Oh, sorry. You mistook you mistook me for one of your more popular guests, Murphy or Bookborn. They're the ones who know the inner sanctum. The booktubers that read books. Yeah, the booktubers that read and, you know, people like to watch talk to you. What? You know, this is, Jimmy, this is all I had. All I had was chatting with nuts. I had all of these freaking gaslighters in the chat being like, oh my gosh, Alan, you and Jimmy, I love hearing y'all talk. You're my favorite episodes. I love that. And then they all betray me and watch all these other episodes. I don't know, five, six, eight more times than they watch our episodes. So you know what? I'm done being gaslit. This is my feminist revolution. <laughs> Alan, it, it's actually more people who don't watch regularly that are watching those. Like the, the ratio is totally. Oh, different. I forgot that I can't draw regular people. Oh, you want to hear a fun statistic? This, this is interesting. Not. And I think it ties into you hating women is. That's uh, right. I forgot about that. <laughs> Bridger in my episode, the audience is like 80 or 90% women. Our episodes are very male dominated. How does that make you feel? What? How does that yeah. make you feel? I don't know. It makes me feel bad about myself. That's what everything else makes me feel. <laughs> So might as well might as well lean into the skid. I asked my kids to share a fun fact in the survey. Brand new kids. I said, fill this out and share a fun fact. I'll decide if the fact is fun. Not all fun facts are fun. And some of them shared fun facts. One one child, the fact that they shared me was over a, like a million people commit suicide every year. And I was like, wow, that is a fact. I'm not certain the funitude of that fact, but I did look it up and it's true. That's sad. That is sad. That is very sad. Is I watched sad. a uh, video today of a guy who uh, he had like a blood clot get the size of his brain and he died. He was like legally dead for I a little imagine, bit. I imagine he did. It, it was he, he ended up getting brought back and now he has chronic seizures. But it was really interesting listening to him talk. And he was talking about like his life did flash before his eyes, which is a pretty common thing you hear about near death experiences. But he was talking about how after it happened, there was just like this peace. And he said the hardest thing about the whole experience is still being alive because he felt that peace. And then like he came back and he's like, it was very difficult for me and it's still difficult for him. I thought that was a really uh, fascinating thing because most of the time you hear people, oh, I saw a light. I didn't see anything. I just came back. Everything's good. But this guy was just saying how hard it was uh, to be back. I thought that was kind of fascinating. You blew my mind, Jimmy, just now. Don't, don't lie. You're reading the chat. I was kind of reading the chat, but I was also listening and it <laughs> like, I can't like, why would you get existential? Like I'm sitting here wishing and, and moaning about like crap. And then you're getting existential on me. Like, I don't, I don't know how to like, how do you segue from that, Jimmy? 
Like, let me complain about how few people watch this again. Like, that's <laughs> that seems like that's the same as having a blood clot and, you know, still being alive, having a blood clot the size of your brain. You've trivialized. You've trivialized my issues, Jimmy. So thank you. Thank you that, for was not, that was thank not you for my trivializing intent. my struggles. That was not my intention. I'm unionizing. Get ready. You, you mentioned the suicide stat. So I said, well, that's interesting because it le leads to this thing. And by the way, Kai... Kai saw the clip. Kai, if, if you've seen a clip on the internet, every time I mention something, I feel like Kai has seen it. He's always got my back or he's lying to me constantly. It's one or the other, but I appreciate you either way, Kai. Thank you. Um, I need to read the chat. People are talking too much and I don't know what they're saying. And I, I think people might be mad at me. Why, why are people know. mad at you? Why are people? Oh, because you said Sanderson's. People are always mad at me for some reason or another. Some would say that you're always mad at yourself, Alan. What? <laughs> I was trying to go introspective on you. Um, Have you self-reflect a little bit? I self-reflect all the time. Um, you know what, yeah. Dubs? I don't think if you add up all my views, I'm I'm ahead of the top ones. Um, no, I most not. certainly did watch the CWN with Bridger Evie. I most certainly did. You go back and watch that and look for my look for my comments. I it was a great episode. They're there. Oh, I know, Jimmy. It's the best episode. Some would say. I mean, it. <laughs> not just some. I would argue that many would say. Uh, the people, you know, it's a free market and uh, people. And the people have spoken. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. C. Dot Scott with the $2 <laughs> super chat and says for Alan's union. Thanks. Thank <laughs> Guess what? That $2 doesn't go to me. It goes to Jimmy. Half of it goes to YouTube. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh i see people all the time like some of the bigger streamers like uh david lightbringer he does a song of ice and fire streams and he just puts a paypal link at the bottom he's like don't super what, chat me what did you say who who does a stream uh, david lightbringer he's not uh his last name no it's it's a youtube name okay I was, it's like a persona okay you i'm know. just making sure yeah like i know but you, like but hold on you 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 go with david you just change lightbringer well, it used to be Lucifer means Lightbringer, but then he changed it to David because his real first name was David. I, I gathered that. I didn't I guess that his name was something else, and he's going by the pseudonym David. Like, who would What's wrong with David? Nothing. It's just very ordinary. You wouldn't choose David and then stick Lightbringer on the end. Why not? That sounds like a Star Wars fanfic name, does it not? It definitely does sound like a Star Wars fanfic <laughs> name. I hear that's the main character of Light Space Bringer as well. Light Space Bringer, get out! Oh, of we here. got another two here. Middle Namers unite. That's right. There you go. Thank you, thank you, CD. Evie, Scott. I don't associate with you because you have few subs. You're interesting, and you're my favorite. Um. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know what this is. Oh, the freaking chat skipped to the bottom. I hate when it does that. I'm trying to catch up. Streamyard, man. It uh. It. It is improving, though. You know I'm what gonna... would be better? If I didn't look at the stupid one in the interface. That one sucks. Looking at the one over here on actual YouTube is much way better. better. It is way better. better. I don't really I know why that is. but Yeah. I mean, it's not bad if you're running the stream. Um, yeah. By the way, I, 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 uh, I noticed uh, whenever I set up the stream that StreamYard now can put an affiliate link in your uh, description. So if anybody wants StreamYard Premium, click the link below to get ten dollars in credit or something i don't know they threw it in there and i was like that's fine go ahead oh my gosh jimbo go. preaching anti-natalism <laughs> except for mitch guaranteed yeah of course it's from mitch also mitch do you play college football because your goodreads photo is exactly like the people before a freaking uh nfl game that are like uh mitch the Ohio State. It looks exactly <laughs> like that. Have you I seen it, Jimmy? No, I haven't, but I can Go tell you. Go look at Mitch's Goodreads photo. It is 100% a troll. Everything. <laughs> it's all troll. I don't even know if it's him, but it's, it is definitely one of those freaking football pictures. Mitch is a legendary. I think he's deleted his. <laughs> yeah, that's a it's a professional basketball player. It seems. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mitch has deleted his Goodreads multiple times, I'm pretty sure, and then just recreates it the next day. What's up, Joanna? Joanna is in like Singapore, I think. That's good. So I but imagine she, it is Joanna's really... across the bloody world, like trying not to die. Her and Philip are gallivanting around. 
Yeah, we received a nice email from from Dr. Philip Chase. Uh, Dr. Philip Chase is in Nepal dodging tigers, and he was kind enough to take time out of his day to send me, Alan, Joanna, and Murphy an email. And I actually thought that was really kind of him. And I realized that Jimmy, I, you know, he sent that to Murphy, and he accidentally carbon copied <laughs> us on it. You think? Yes, that is what I think. One hundred percent. I was going to say maybe it was an old email chain from a discussion, but Philip doesn't have you on any discussions. So. I know. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> oh, my God. Alan, if you had to pick a top five best fantasy authors alive, who would you pick? And if that's too many, you can do three. That's fine. What like, who do you think the best living fantasy I authors count are? Count to five? No, I just, you know, I mean, it's a lot of brain power. You know, I, know I mean, that's family. true. And we wouldn't want to get too high of a number. We might get over the people who actually watch this. So we want to make sure we keep it people low. watching right now. You're out of your um, mind. What is going? What the chat? I don't know if you see the chat on YouTube. Like it has like supplanted. There's an emoji, but there's text over the emoji obscuring the actual text. Face with tears of joy is like written over the emoji. It's a stupid buggy piece of crap. I, I, Alan, what? Alan, focus on me. I'm here with you. Focus on me. <laughs> I'm trying to catch up with the comments. I'm usually better about seeing them. And then they're I'm... not saying anything nice about I you. I know. It's I mostly. Know. Oh, I know. Fun. I know. Um, five best, five best living authors alive. Living authors. Let yeah. me tell you who's not on that list. Brandon Sanderson. Why is that? I don't like him. And I don't think, I don't think people, I don't think the internet complains about that enough. I see way too many people talking Brandon Sanderson up and I just feel like he doesn't get enough bad press. So I'm here to, you know, I'm here to, to, to give you the issue from all sides. <laughs> um, best living authors, best living authors. Germ is on there. Um, I know people like, like, well, I mean, actually, Gurm actually doesn't get any bad press either. Gurm is one of those people that's hailed way too much. I mean, I can't I can't freaking open my closet door without someone being like, oh, my gosh, I love Gurm. He's the best author ever. You just take your time, George. We'll read it when we're ready. Like, I can't turn a corner without seeing that on the Internet. Um, so I need to hype. I need to uh, I may need to talk him down. I may need to insult George, too, because he gets way too much love. Yeah, people um, are way too patient with him, huh? I mean, I mean, I mean, Jimmy's the Internet. If there's one thing the internet's known for is its patience. I mean, if only the real world were more like that. <laughs> and encouraging. Um, so uh, Gurm is on there because I think Gurm's an exceptional writer. Because um, mm -hmm. I'm still thinking about Gurm books that I've read. Um, I'm gonna. I'm, are we talking about fantasy authors? Yeah, fantasy people who um, have made their, their stay in fantasy. Well, main, making their stay and them being good are two separate things. Well, um, I just mean like uh, you know, like for instance, Brandon Sanderson discounted Stephen King because he's kind of more in the horror realm of things so he's like well he's written fantasy but he's not a fantasy author Does and we sense? all know that brandon sanderson is the authority on um on fantasy novels like if he says it it must be law um in fact can someone go chisel that out on a tablet so i make sure that i don't mention stephen king while talking about fantasy because let me tell you the gunslinger that's nothing if not nonfiction. um <laughs> so um Daniel Abraham, I'm putting Daniel Abraham on there um, because, in my opinion, Daniel Abraham. Um, oh, I don't know, Jimmy. I don't read enough authors. Um, man, I don't know. Am I just talking about my favorite or who I really think is the best? Well, so here, oh. how about this? What? Okay. I mean, I think Steven Erickson is fantastic, so he's, he's got to be on there too. Love to see it. I love to see it. So, so Sanderson had an interesting – uh criteria it isn't perfect um but he was thinking influence fame quality and range okay well i you have to take daniel abraham off because like the fame category like he gets like a like a two and and that you know what he gets the two for being one of james s.a Corey who wrote the expanse that's when he gets the <laughs> that's what he gets the point for not even his real name how do you think he feels he's like the only thing i ever did joint and it's the one that blew up <laughs> I think it, if, Derry, I, I can't tell if Derry's trolling me or if she just got here. No, Derry's in a good mood today because, uh, folks, I don't know if you saw it and do not go look for it if you haven't finished Realm of the Elderlings because there's a spoiler in the post. But Robin Hobb is working on a new Realm of the Elderlings book. 
which I is thought she ended it. Is she pulling a row, a rolling where it's like, you know what? I'm not going to write these anymore. <laughs> Wait a minute. I need a paycheck. I'm going to write these again. Uh, she's certainly not, not doing that. I don't think. Is it, um, is it, is it fit? Ursula Le Guin is dead. Is Call it Fitz Fitzgerald and the cursed child or the cursed assassin or whatever? Is that what it's yeah. called? No, I think it, it's, it's it, there's a chance it might be a novella or a short story. Um, but your we mom's don't know. a novella. How about that one, Jimmy? My mom's probably listening, so I'd like you to apologize. Oh, I'm sorry, Mama Nuts. <laughs> I love your mom. I take it back. You're her yeah. second favorite booktuber behind Library Ladder. Of course. <laughs> of course. There's just Why something, wouldn't I be? Something about um, the, the backdrop, you know? What do you mean the backdrop? Do I not His have backdrop. my shelves not nice enough? Actually, I love your new backdrop, to be honest. I think your camera looks great. Am I supposed to listen to this? Whatever. Um, <laughs> what am I doing? Terry, I can't say Terry Press. He's dead. Um, yeah. um, I'm, I mean, I'm going to say... I'm going to say KJ Parker. No one else is, but I'm going to, because I think, I mean, I also think he's written, if you combine him with Tom, Tom Holt, that dude has written so much. Like he is incredibly prolific. Um, I did not forget KJ Parker. I would just, what good timing. I just didn't know if I was going to list him. Um, uh, Parker, Abraham, George Erickson. I guess I need one more. You need one more. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to reboot in a second. Um, uh, 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 um, I don't know. Bancroft hasn't written enough. Um, I was honestly kind of expecting you to pick something crazy like an R.A. Salvatore or something. I haven't read R.A. Salvatore recently. Oh, Tchaikovsky. That's a good one. Yeah, I consider Tchaikovsky. I just didn't say that yet. I consider Tchaikovsky. Um, a lot of Gaiman mentions from people, which I, I think I would, I think you'd, you know, you know what I've read by Gaiman, good omens. And he didn't write most of it. That's what I've read by Gaiman. So, Did you like good omens or no? I mean, I like good omens. I hate that people think it's the best of the things. Good omens is fine. And it's, it, in fact, good omens is good. Good omens is, is excellent minus. Um, but it's not like, oh my gosh, this is the funniest thing. Like, that's fine. Like, I mean, I don't like the whole apocalypse stuff. Like, Ooh, look, the angels and demons are working together. I mean, okay. Um, but it's not, it's not my favorite looking for group. Who's looking for group. No, it's uh let's effing go. Oh, I thought I was looking for group. My, my man, Matt. Um, so Sanderson said something interesting in his podcast. He said, Oh, I that, can't wait to hear this. He said, he thinks that the good omens TV show is better than the book. I thought that was interesting. He said cool. it felt he got the iron out some stuff because, you know, you're getting to go over it again. And he said he thought the ending landed a little better. Did his friend at the end of the podcast crown him the king of bad opinions? Because that's that's a big one. Did you watch the show? I watched the first episode of the show and then I no, I didn't watch it. But but again, um, if someone wants to tell me that I have to watch something in order to dis to have an opinion about it, um, fight me. Uh, they <laughs> removed my favorite part of the book. So by default, it's not better. They mm -hmm. removed my favorite part of the book. So I, so no, I don't like it. Um, Colin wants to know if I have any interest in reading Red Wall books. Uh, yes, I do. I have a uh, niece who is, you know, growing up, and I definitely am going to be reading Red Wall to her if I get the opportunity. Um, as well as The Hobbit, obviously. It's like the thing I'm most excited about in the next five years. <laughs> um, so Sanderson's top five. I thought I thought his top five was interesting. He had an honorable mention of Sarah J. Mass, Lee Bardugo, Terry Brooks, Holly Black, V.E. Schwab, Patrick Rothfuss. He said if he had remembered... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Brandon Sanderson put Holly Black on the honorable mentions of the, of the greatest living authors? It's his list, not mine, brother. Wait, I'll tell you who is his co-host picked at the very end be, for number one because you're going to lose your mind. Uh, Don't so make he's bad joke, Sanderson. Like, just go go write some bad humor in a book. What if what if Wayne, what if Wax or Wayne, whichever one? What if Wayne talks about his hat some more? Let make make sure make sure we know that he has a hat. Like, make sure we know because I forgot. Like, I forgot. I, in fact, 
from the beginning, from the for chapter one to chapter two, I actually forgot for a second that he had a hat. What do you have against hats? I don't have anything against hats. I have I when your personality is that you have a hat and you make jokes about having a hat. Fair enough. I feel like you're just coming at hats pretty hard. I <laughs> I mean, I, I like hats. I mean, I, I have a whatever. That's a dumb list. Holly Black doesn't belong on the bloody I mean, on the bloody honorable mention of that freaking list. Well, also Sorry, Holly Black fans. I see people mentioning author. It's it's living authors to be clear. Living. I see a lot of dead people mentioned in the chat. Uh, the undead list will be next week, I guess. Uh, but number five, he said if he had thought about it, he forgot her. He would have put Robin Hobb. But as the official list goes, is Guy Garvel K, which I think is a pretty good pick. Um, number four is Neil Gaiman, another pretty good pick. Number three, N.K. Jemison. I think that's pretty good number two is a weird one and i want to see if you read this person alan because i have it is uh jane yolan who's written like a lot of uh children's books have you ever heard of jane yolan do I okay i'm gonna go with read a lot of children's books well she's written like a lot of kids today even know jane yolan so i i thought maybe you had read her i don't think any there. kids today know who that is let me look up. Let's see what kind of Jane Yolen, YOLO, YOLO. Yolen, oh, Y O L E N. Um, I think she's like literally like one of the most prolific. Like, not how do dinosaurs go to school? Oh, yeah, I yeah. Wait, no, I haven't read those. Those are too late. I thought I recognized them. I've seen them before in the library. Yeah, she's she a, she's a, a giant. Yes, she wrote a bunch of books that say that are about like how do dinosaurs say I'm mad. How do dinosaurs stay safe? They don't. They're murdered by meteors. How do dinosaurs get well soon? They don't. They die because they have no antibiotics. How do dinosaurs eat their food? They tear into it with their jaws. How do dinosaurs go to school? They don't. Dinosaurs didn't go to school, idiot. <laughs> Library Liar says Jane Yolen launched the YA fairy tale retellings 20 to 30 years ago. Oh, so I have heard a thank. I have heard a thank for Circe and Song of Achilles. Well, and I don't, every I don't know other. And, oh, he said fairy tale. Never mind. Not the mythology. Yeah. Oh, That's my it. God. If I have to read another Greek mythology reimagining, I'm going to drive an ice pick into my skull. Listen, I like a little spice, you know, in the retail. You got to add a little spice in there, Alan. You know, I know you're. Have I big... said anything positive in the. 30 minutes we've been on. I don't think I have. I think no, I've but we're, we're going to get Nancy there. this entire time. I have an activity that we're going to get to in a bit. And I think I came on like fake grouchy. Like I'm tired. I was fake grouchy. I've literally put myself in a bad mood on accident. <laughs> I tried to dig you out, I but know. you took the shovel from me and beat me I over know, the head. I did. Sorry. <laughs> uh, number one. Who do you think Brandon Sanderson's number one living author is? Cersei is trash. Um, Laura. Sorry. What? Who do I think? Yeah, who do you think his number one is? Brandon Sanderson? Uh -huh. Who is who did he put himself? No, he no. So before I say number one, he actually said that he would maybe put himself in the top 15. And I don't think Oh, he get out of here with your false no. humility, Brando. Alan, Alan, I'm telling you, I watched it and the way he said it, I genuinely believed him. And I would be the first person to be like, that dude's being fake sincere. Because I hate that. Have you seen was... Oppenheimer? Do you really believe that that Killian Murphy like felt trauma at the drop of having created the atomic bomb? <laughs> Did you believe him? If he Are was believable, saying... then it's possible for people for you to believe someone who is also lying. Listen, I think it's a bigger stretch to say that. It's a, it's a bigger stretch for you to say that Brandon Sanderson and Murphy are on the same level when it comes to acting <laughs> than it is. <laughs> to say that maybe Murphy actually felt regret for the nuclear bomb. Saying, I thought you were saying Murphy as in Murphy Napier. I'm like, I didn't compare them at like you mean Killian Murphy. Yeah, I just he I always forget to I eat and get some sleep. Why does he always look so gaunt and tired, bro? His performance in Oppenheimer was <sighs> so. I know I haven't seen it. Oh, uh, sure I, I wish you had. I wish we could talk about it. But he's Spoiler. gaunt and freaking tired in everything. Anything he's in, he's gaunt and tired. <laughs> Big Al, thank you so much for the two spot. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Even though you're on Alan's side of this, which is ridiculous. Number one uh, best living fantasy author for uh, Sanderson was George R. R. Martin. And the thing that I took away from it that I thought was really interesting is how much he praised him as an editor and said that's like one of the things people don't talk about a lot is how good of an editor George is. And George edited Emperor's Soul for him. 
and said it was. Is that why people like that book more than the other ones? I don't know, but it is my favorite Sanderson piece, which is interesting. I haven't read it. If if I'm anything, I'm consistent, folks. Just saying. B says Barbie was better than Oppenheimer. Possible. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen either one. I wanted to see both, and I've seen neither. Um, J.K. Rowling was on was on the list because of his criteria. Uh, her range is poor, and then he also said that her quality is substandard, which I would probably agree with. Has he read Alloy of Law? <laughs> hey, he didn't say he. Hey, he put her above himself. Uh, okay, so. Um, she was only Evie. Thank you for the two spots. Says, please share with the class the news about Sophia. Sophia is the foster dog. Christine and I were fostering. Okay, what happened? Oh, nothing. We we just we're adopting her. So we have. Oh, are you yeah. good, man? I'm glad. Yeah. I I had a feeling you were. I mean, the thing. So here's how it happened. Christina's like, "Can we foster dog?" I'm like, "Christina, we ain't gonna foster no dog because you know you're not gonna want to give it back." She's like, "Yes, I will. It'll be fine." I'm like, oh, "Fine, we'll foster a stupid dog." And so we get it. And like a month in, I'm like, "What if we kept it?" And she's like, "What? You were worried about me?" I'm like, "Yeah, I know, but whatever. What if we kept it?" She's like, "No, we don't need another dog." I'm like, oh. And so people came to to some people came to look at seeing about adopting her, and they came over, and then they ghosted the adoption agency. Never heard from them again. And so I was like. But what if we kept her? And she's like, yeah, what if we kept her? I'm like, let's do it. So we decided to keep her. Awesome, man. I'm really happy for you guys. The dog is yeah. sweet. She's super sweet. She's 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 very cool. And um, she'll be taken care of now. You don't have to worry about it. That's yes. Great. That's what like I re like I can't foster like like I don't I don't know of people who can do a better job than me. That's the problem. It's like I can take care of this animal. Well, I don't know that the person we're giving her to can do the same, can do the same. So we can only, um, we can only, uh, you know, hope. Yeah. So. I, I definitely feel, um, like I could not be a foster cause I would just take in every, every animal. word. I, I had nine one. cats once, Jimmy, for the same reason. <laughs> that is far too many cats. You want to know what their names were? <laughs> yes. So I'll go from oldest to youngest. Nikita Khrushchev. We called him Nikita. Fidel Castro. We called him Castro. Uh, Benito Mussolini, we called him Moose. Uh, Malcolm X, we called him Malcolm. Um, Janet Reno, because she was ugly. Um, Richard Nixon, we called him Nixon. <laughs> Hid, uh, Prime Minister, <laughs> Prime Minister Hideki Tojo, who was the Prime Minister of, of Japan during World War II, we called him Tojo. And Eva, Eva Peron. Um, the wife of Argentinian dictator Juan Perón. Subject the fact of, that you remember all nine names is very impressive. I just lost Ava in November. She was she lasted the longest. Oh, time. sorry, and I can't forget Nero. Nero uh, Domitius Ahenobarbus. Was um, Nero a terror or no? No, that's a sweet cat. <laughs> Nick said, "I've oh, I've never met a cat with my name." <laughs> is your um, name is your name Nixon? Nikita. Is your name really Nikita? That's awesome. So <laughs> the problem with Nikita is when I got Nikita, I thought Nikita was a girl, and I had, was a fan of the show La Femme Nikita. So I named an, I named her Nikita, and then it was very obvious it wasn't a girl. And someone informed me like, you know, Khrushchev's first name is Nikita. I'm like, it is Nikita. Boom, keeping it. And you so that's where it started. Man. That's where I it like started. it. Um, we had a, a scare with our our oldest cat Denver, um, who I called Denver Nugget for no real reason and isn't that, uh, a, isn't that a basketball team yes it is and uh that that's the extent of of the name i guess but uh why he, does mitch have a basketball player as his goodreads photo mitch right. is a, a sports head man Continue. he's a sports head oh, okay. uh, but the oldest denver sneezed this uh this week at like 11 p.m and it was just blood and i was like what like i was like what wh 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 what's happening i got terrified like I'm a lot of blood. Uh, and it turns out he had just had uh, the rooms kind of dry and he likes to sleep on top of me at night. So he just sits there and I guess I get dry and he does too. And he's basically busted his blood vessels in his nose. Uh, but we're going to the vet on Monday. But oh, this I was recently. I thought yeah, dude, it, it was terrible. I literally thought he was dying and I just cried for like 30 minutes. Like I believe baby. it. Oh, oh my gosh. It killed me. It absolutely killed me. Dude's my best friend because I, I work from home, so I literally spend all day and night with the cats. Like, unless I'm at jujitsu or the gym, like I, I'm with the cats 
I always have a cat on my lap. So I was like, it like kind of scared me how attached I am. Yeah. Like I obviously I am and I love I love my animals, but it's just like, oh, that's that's uh that's gonna happen one day and that's gonna be really tough. Really, it really is. tough. Like it's 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 I do not envy have like I just hate having to do it. I hate having to do it. I've had to do it five times with my cat. Uh because I was dating a girl at the time, and so when we broke up, she took she took four of the animals for the cats, and I kept five. So I think she just put the last one down recently. So I think they're all gone now. Um, but yeah, I had to put five down. It was, it was terrible. And Samson, the problem is Samson and Sophia are both like seven, seven and a half. And uh, they're bigger dogs, you know, so don't have too, too much longer with them either, which sucks. Um, yeah, you just gotta, you gotta just enjoy them while you have them. I you freaking know? hate it. There are people like, I warn my students. I say, if you, if I hear the words from you, it's just, it's just a cat or it's just a dog. I oh. promise you, you'll be out of my class. Like, I promise you, like, like, even if you think that, why on earth would you be douchey enough to tell someone that? Like, you, like, you're a douchebag. I will go down to your counselor today and talk to them about removing you. So, children. I've had that as an adult in a work setting. I had a coworker who was like, I just hate people who love their animals. Cool. <laughs> it's like, what? Bye. I hate you. So, how about that one? Yeah, I, uh, I never quite got along with him. <laughs> To be honest, and, and luckily the job's remote, or I probably would have headbutted him. But uh, boom, yeah, get that savage, uh, savage side of my Indeed. self out there. But uh, anyway, sorry about the foulness of this first forty minutes chat. <laughs> I think it's been fairly uh, useful for people to get it all out. Um, yeah, that'll, so that'll 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 okay. Not watch my not watch my chatting with nuts episode. That'll show him. <laughs> But I, I uh, I'm glad that Denver's okay. Um, but now I'm just like, you know, it was on the brain most of the week, and it was just, uh, it was tough. So I saw, I saw a really sad thing on Instagram, and someone was like, you know, you'll have many pets in your life, but your pet will only have one you, like for their entire life. And I was like, why did I have to see this the day after this happened? Like, I know, I, I can't do that. You know, it's ugh, terrible. And better news. Um, I wanted to tell you about the co-host. Like this whole thing was to tell you about Brandon Sanderson's co-host, which I think someone did confirm that's Dan Wells. I, I, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, his number one, he, he more picked like favorites, like current favorites, like modern authors. And his number one best living fantasy author was Fonda Lee. And I immediately thought of you. <laughs> Fonda Lee is well known for her breadth of work. Um, I mean, I think she's been working since, 2019 i mean that's a long time to have written books <laughs> to be um, fair to him he was definitely picking more like just favorite like kind of like with you picking kj parker like people who he thinks doing something i'm really sorry different. you're comparing so hold no. on you just compared no, no no you just compared four books sorry three books in a novella with i don't know 50 books over hey. the course of three decades hey she has written some YA too. Oh, you're right. My point is completely neutralized. I withdraw my objection. Do you think KJ Parker is better than Fonda Lee? I mean, yes. Like now, I, emphatically. I, I'm, I'm just trying to get uh oh get people mad at you. That's okay. <laughs> I have again, I have I to be real, I have no problem with Fonda Lee. But I mean, like, if it, like the dude is violating Sanderson's own criteria. Well, he didn't go through. The, he didn't yeah. use that criteria. He yeah. said, I mean, and he, the, he and that's fine. it was just funny listening to them talk because I thought Sanderson's was like really compelling to think about because like there's there's at least some sort of score that you can put on. Even though it's not <laughs> it. But then like <laughs> Dan Wells is just throwing out like Matt uh, Ruff or something like that. Like, whoever wrote Lovecraft Country and stuff and just like wild stuff. He wrote a uh, uh, he mentioned a comic book author as well. And Sanderson, you can tell Sanderson's like, what? Who is this? I don't know who this is. So it was a very entertaining episode. I would definitely encourage people if you're curious. I know I just spoiled uh, the entire video for you, but if you're curious, it's it's like 50 minutes, and I I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed listening to Sanderson talk, and also hearing him talk about writing. Like the dude does get it. I know that he gets a lot of flack for not having you know the most uh, beautiful prose in the world, but like the guy clearly understands the business and writing as well, like the craft of writing. Cause he was talking about how much he loves GGK 
and how GGK writes in like an older, almost Tolkien style. And he's just like, I love it. Like, it's what I love to read. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that there's authors who you would think they would write like their favorite authors, but that's just not how it works. Yeah. Like sometimes you have to go with, with what works for you. Same thing in wrestling. You know, I love British wrestlers, like old world of sport guys. I can't wrestle. I couldn't wrestle that style. So I had to go in a different lane, but if I could have, I would have preferred to work like that and make art like that. So I just always think that that's kind of fascinating whenever you hear about what people like whenever they're in that industry. So Cool. I get that. And I'm, I, I'm not going to say a comment that I was going to say that is just super negative on like actually negative on Sanderson. Um, because I think I've done that enough. Um, <laughs> and really there's too much of that on the internet. Um, so, you know, like, I mean, no, I, I mean, I believe that. I mean, I, I believe that. Like, I, I mean, you know, I like, I like Miss Born Era one. I mean, also, I think that you're being heavily, uh, embellished. Like heavily, what, what what am I embellishing? What am I? Embellishing? Your, your, your hatred for Sanderson. You don't actually hate Sanderson at all. No, I don't actually hate Sanderson. I yeah. Sanderson irritates me. The things that he does and the way that he writes, like genuinely irritate me. But I don't hate him. He seems perfectly nice. It would be unreasonable for me to hate a nice person. Um, if he was a douchebag, it'd be easy to hate him. Um, so no, no. I but I find him. I find him irritating. Um, and I find having like I. I don't know. Oh I find how much I find how much slack his super fans cut his writing to be grading. But people can like what they want to like, and it's not my business to tell them they can't. So that, I great. mean, I have not read all of First Law, so maybe, um, maybe, maybe First Law gets gets awful in its humor. Um, <laughs> because that that introduction for Shalon and Way of Kings is one of the worst attempts at amusement that i've ever read in my entire life like i cannot i genuinely cannot believe that he has an editor that is not his best friend or his wife like i can't believe it because i do not i cannot accept just like i can't accept that my students don't know how long the months are like i can't i cannot accept that as fact I cannot accept that an editor read that chapter, the first chapter with Shalon in Way of Kings, and said, you know what? We should keep all that. Like, that's gold. Like, oh, oh my gosh, do you have any more? Keep that coming. I cannot accept it. Like, I can't. Like, he must have been too popular by the time he wrote it to where it's like, you know what? You know what you're doing. You just go ahead. People are going to be fine with it. Because someone should have said, dude, this is bad. Like, like let, me... let, let us hire a Twitter comedy writer or something. What can I can I offer a different perspective on it? No, I actually like. Shalana okay, go ahead. Edwards. I said no, but you go right ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna just plow <laughs> right through. Um, I like Shalon in the Way of Kings because I read it as in. I think Sanderson is aware that she's not funny or witty, and we're meant to compare her to Yasna, who is actually written pretty well for an. I'm sorry. Compare movie. her to who? Yasna. You, you mean the name that starts with a J? No, 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 no. I get, I get this one. I get this one because I watch MMA and there's tons of people with J's that are like Joanna John Jacek. Sure. But there's also a guy named John. Yeah. But I even call Joanna Joanna, but she doesn't let me. She doesn't want me to call her Joanna. I know, Robin. but note how she doesn't go by Joanna. Yeah. Well, she could. You're right. Guess what? Yasna's name could be if you've never heard Sanderson say it. Well, here's yes. the thing, Alan. If that if you're gonna if you're gonna go that way, then we got to start saying it, that it is um, Julius Kaiser, right? I mean, that's that's really that that is how it is pronounced in Latin. Yasna. I I mean, I can't I can't count all the famous Roman women named Yasna. How many? Like roughly zero. I literally can't count them because they don't <laughs> exist. <laughs> Here's the, so I think that Jasna or Yasna, uh, however you want to say it, I think that she is meant Top to actually. Trails. She she's actually meant to be the intelligent one and the witty one. And we get introduced Shalon, and like she's not aware that there's like levels to the game. I and I, like that's how drank, I read her I feel character. Like you've drunk the Kool Aid, Jimmy. I like Shalon. I no no hold on. We're not talking about whether we like Shalon. I also like Shalon. I'm I'm not I'm talking purely I like the wolf about 
I like Shalon. Oh, you're talking purely about the humor in her introduction chapter, not even the rest of it. The introduction chapter when she's on the boat, stepping off the boat, that scene alone. That is the, that is the only, you can't, we can't focus on how much we like her later, just focusing on this. And I think, like, I think any rational brain has to find a way to make it make sense because we as humans can't actually wrap our minds around that this might be unintentional. So we must find a way to rationalize it. And I think that's where that, that's where that theory comes from because no one can actually be like, you know what? This is gold. I'm so glad. Like, Oh, <laughs> that I'm sorry, Jimmy. Did you just read Shalon's introduction? Is that why you're laughing so hard? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it's my impression of people laughing. Oh my God. Yeah. Someone said Jimmy's take on Shalon is the greatest anime, bet anime betrayal. Listen, in my way of Kings review, I said that I like Shalon chapters more than Kaladin chapters. And I've never been called stupid so much until I made one piece videos. And you then, idiot. Yeah. Didn't you know, didn't you know that inner like inner, they don't know that there's rubber there. He's actually a genius. You idiot. <laughs> to be fair. Most people are very, very nice. On hey, those guess videos, what? But inner I sucks. So he sucks. Inner his arc sucks. Skypius sucks. Nobody cares. Oh, you've got wings? Congratulations. Stay up there so I don't have to read about you anymore. You and your dumb bandana. Put a shirt on, Enter. <laughs> Shout out to all the One Piece people who know what <laughs> we're talking about. <laughs> See, that's got to agree. Shalon is not aware of true statement. That's how I read her character. I, I, I like, I, I, I don't think that she thinks she's funny. Like, oh, I, I don't know. Whatever. I think people are, people are agreeing with you, Alan. I, I'm getting... Uh... I'm, in such, I'm, in such a, I'm in such a bad mood. I'm, like, I'm, bu I'm bumming everybody out. This is why no one watched the video. They're like, I don't want to hear that cranky old man whine about something anymore. You should definitely call me Yimmy from now on. I ain't calling you no Yimmy. Not please. until Sanderson tells me that's how you pronounce your name. And then I will. Will you call me Yimmy, please? No. Please. Do you like Enter, Christian? It ain't so. Skypea. No, Chris, Christian also feels the same way Good. we do about Skypea. Skypea is a Skype is a trash arc. I I liked it, and I still got I still got crapped on. Well, you didn't go hard. You didn't go hard enough. You didn't just like completely lean into this is garbage. Thank you, bees. Thank you very much. She said that video was poggers, which is one of my favorite words on the poggers. internet. Yeah, I never get to use it. Doesn't feel. Right oh no, me. Nick's leaving. I said I like Shalon, Nick. I do like Shalon. Is I like Shalon better than Kaladin. Y'all can go ahead and get mad at me there. Keep in mind, I have only read part one. I have only read part one. But Shalon, her humor's terrible. But you know what she does? Anything that isn't mope. Anything that isn't mope. Why do I have to read a hundred pages of Kaladin being like, oh, oh? Oh, like, you know who the worst character is? Sylph, for whatever her freaking name is, for stopping him from jumping into the chasm. Spoiler. Sorry, spoiler alert for part one of Way of Kings. <laughs> I, I I have a comment here that really made me think about my life, and it's from Mitch. He says, if you like Shalon, you have to admit you misinterpreted Armin from Attack on Titan. No, no, because, you know, guess how many times Shalon cries? Zero. Guess how many times Armin cries? Every episode. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't do it, Aaron. <laughs> I can't. I'm not strong enough. I'm not strong like you and whatever his freaking name is. I just want to see the sea. Oh, my gosh. I'll show you the sea as I drown you in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh my God. All right, Alan, we're going to move into this uh, little activity that I have planned out for I us. I don't okay. want to do activities, Jimmy. Oh, Are come you on. It'll be an icebreaker. Uh, Tori, I see that you like Sinja. Sinja sucks. I, that's, a, that's a horrible take. Terrible take. All right, Alan. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So you're going to see here that I have eight spots. Okay. So what I have, <laughs> Christian says he draws the line in arm and hate. <laughs> don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people are people are defending Armin. That's you know he's got he's. If y'all have seen 
if y'all have seen that show to the end of season three, if y'all have seen that show to the end of season three, there is no, there is no reason that a decision is made in that. It has no narrative purpose whatsoever. It is the worst decision in the history of media. Like I've never seen, I've never seen such shoddy writing before in my life. Like, let's just hand wave that. Like what? What? Whatever. I hope y'all are happy with your choice. Uh, as you can see, I get this really high tech uh, top list here because I couldn't find one online that I liked. So I said, I'll just do it in text edit. Because is that, that the, is that the freaking iMac version of Notepad? Uh, yes. Yes, All it right. is. Okay, so here's the thing. You have eight slots, eight being the worst, one being the best, but all these are going to be relatively good, hopefully. Am I going to rank didn't... your other co-hosts? Uh, no, but that would have okay. been funny. Okay. Uh, but you would probably hurt someone's feelings. So I No, you might have. No, go ahead. Number one is uh, number one is Bridger. Number two is Murphy. Number three is Philip. Number four is Bookborn. Number five is Steven Erickson. And uh, number six is, well, I, I guess me. <sighs> So I have assorted a name, some names of authors you've read in the past. And there are far more than eight on the list. And I'm going to spin a wheel that I have off screen. And it is going to randomly select authors. And you're going to have to place them without knowing who else is on the wheel. Um, so this oh, is so I, cannot, I cannot move the places. No. You have Man, to decide when they come up, up. And these are all people I've read, not necessarily enjoyed. That. It's people you've read in the past. You're just going to screenshot it and say, this is what Alan thinks his favorite authors are. That is 100% what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yep. That's fine. That's fine. That is That was the entire plan for this. Uh, That's fine. Let's play this game. All right. So I'm spinning the wheel here. There's probably like 30 or 40 people. I didn't know you read that many authors. Um, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep one open too long, and I'm going to be stuck with someone trash. Oh, no. Why did this have to be the first one? Okay. All right. The first one is KJ Parker. Okay, so you realize that I can't see the wheel, right? Yeah, that's on purpose because I don't want you to know who's on it. No, no, no. What I mean is that if you didn't want that to be the first one, you could have said that you spun someone else. Or oh, spun yeah. No, no, no. We're doing it straight up. We're doing it fair. It's it Okay, it's you can go ahead. Yeah, you went to the right one. Just go ahead and put them there. Because you All know right. what? Even if there's even if there's someone else, uh, even if it's Pratchett, I will be, I'll be okay with having put Parker at one. Yeah, and that disappoints me because I was hoping you'd get like, just destroyed on your number one. I so. know. I you were hoping I would leave number one open and get stuck with SJM or something on. Yes, on number one. I know. I know. Literally, what I was hoping. You're yeah. horrible. Keep going. I, I should have. I show. Oh, yes. Okay. This. Oh no! It went past. Damn it. Okay. This is a good one though. Uh, Evan Winter, author of Rage of Dragons. <sighs> Evan Winter. I mean, it's fine. I don't hate that. Um. I'm going to end up having to rank someone higher than him, but put him as put him at seven at seven. All right. Yeah. I hope Terry Pratchett goes behind him. No, I, I, no it's not going to happen. Just in <laughs> case, just in case, like if Pratchett hadn't been spun yet, just in case I, I will put whoever is the next to last in eight. And you know, I should have made a master list. So I could show you at the end, but I, I delete them as they get hit. So unfortunately, oh, it is what it is. All right. So the third author that you're going to have to place on this top eight list is. Damn it. This is not going how I wanted it to. Terry no. Pratchett. Oh, nice. Number two. He should have been number like he should be at number one for me, but I'll accept it. That is. Look at Jimmy, your attempt to troll like the fates are against you. <laughs> People are giving thumbs downs. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't have got. I missed I missed the last few minutes. Is this a mid author list? <laughs> brutal. Brutal. Um, yeah, so this is unfortunate because now you're you're you know you're pretty much good at this point. Um this is gonna be an interesting one though. Uh and I don't know if a lot of people know that you've read this author. Uh Stephen King. Like you've read a decent amount of Stephen King. I've read a bunch of Stephen King. I've yeah. read more Stephen King than many people who really like Stephen King. Maybe me, more than me, even. I used to read Stephen King a lot back when I stopped reading. Um, I stopped reading fantasy because we know that Stephen King isn't a fantasy author. So because I wasn't reading fantasy, I could then read Stephen King. Um, and so like in that time period, I read a ton of things that weren't fantasy, uh, including Stephen King. And so I read a bunch of his stuff. I read like 
all of Dark Tower. I mean, you know, you know, like I was waiting for the next book of Dark Tower to come out. I read it. I read in high school. I read The Stand and then learned that there was a extended edition of The Stand. And I like that one even better. You people who don't like the extended edition, what's wrong with you? I love The Stand. Um, I read it. Um, I read The Regulators and Desperation. I read um, the awful, awful book that is The Talisman. Um, I read the, the, uh, the other awful, awful book that is the Tommy knockers. Um, I read thinner, um, because I watched the movie. And so I'm like, I guess I should read that. I read that. I read, um, eyes of the dragon. Eyes of the dragon was actually the first Stephen King book I read. I was in middle school. Um, I, like the, I got it in the library. I'm certain it's banned these days. Um, but so I read eyes of the dragon, which I like a lot. That was my first introduction to Randall flag. Um, uh what else have i read what are other stephen king books uh um, shining no i've never read the shining because I didn't, I didn't like the movie no i didn't read pet cemetery i read salem's lot when i was reading the That's um cool. the dark tower books um because i was like what's this um what else oh needful things um I read oh I, I, I read needful things. i read cell <laughs> I have cell in hardback. Um, have you read eleven twenty two sixty three? I've seen eleven twenty two sixty three, and I, I, I like I the show. Know, actually, I mean, the show was decent, even though it's got freaking Franco in it. But like, I don't, I just don't care enough about the sixties and the Kennedy assassination. Like, and I know, like, I know, like everyone, everyone thinks it's good, but like, I just, I don't. I just don't care enough. Like it's one of my least favorite periods in history. I, I just, but if they were wearing robes and conquering people, you'd be like, this is sick. Oh, for sure. If you wrote 11, 22, 63 BC, are you kidding me? <laughs> 63 BC was a huge year. Uh, that's a, that sounds like his next novel for sure. Oh, green mile, green mile. Thank you. Um, thank people you. are tossing some out green mile. Um, you have definitely read more King than me. Misery. Um, the night shift, some the short stories, everything's eventual, another short story collection. Um, I am uh, reading Under the Dome in October. So I really liked the first season and most of the second season of Under the Dome of the show. And then it wasn't good anymore. And then I read what happens in Under the Dome, and that sounds even dumber. So <laughs> I don't want to read that. I'm excited to read it, even though I know that apparently the ending's very weak. Um, you know, Journey Before Destination, as Brandon Sanderson always says. So where, where are you, you have put a ton? Oh, oh, Dreamcatcher, Dreamcatcher. I love Dreamcatcher. All you Dreamcatcher haters, you can suck it. Dreamcatcher is great. My friend yeah. Amanda, uh, Shelf Unstable, loves Dreamcatcher. Thank you, Amanda. And all of the all these freaking talisman apologists. Oh my gosh, go start a religion or something. Like that's <laughs> awful book. Night Shift. Night Shift is a great collection of short stories. Love it. There she is. There's Amanda. Dreamcatcher rules. I, Thank I was so, you, Amanda. I'm so happy she was watching. There are was... so many people who freaking hate um that hate freaking Dreamcatcher. Frank loves it. Thank you. And the movie's even better. I did like the movie. I've seen the movie. I saw it when I was a kid and I loved Jason it. Jason Lee, Damian Lewis, um, Mar or Donnie, Donnie Wahlberg, Timothy oh, Oliphant. Such a good movie. Have you read Revival or Duma Key? Those are the okay, two movies so, that I really so want to read. Take the most recent book of the Stephen King books I've read, Cell. Cell, because I haven't hardback. That came out in like 2001, 2002, something like that. I have not read a Stephen King book since then so maybe the dark tower actually is my most recent stephen king book i haven't read anything um by stephen king since then i i just i just haven't i don't know why um i started reading fantasy again and since i'm reading fantasy i can't actually read um authors that aren't fantasy authors um like stephen king so um yeah i haven't read i haven't read uh, stephen king since then and i kind of want to but then he writes things like 11 22 63 where i'm like I'd rather read about cell phones that kill everybody. <laughs> like, that's, it, that's unfortunate. Man. I love that book. I, I everyone does, Jimmy. It, like, there's actually most most people in this okay. sphere of booktube really that's like fair. it. That's fair. Um, that is, fair. and like I, like I wish I liked it. Like, I'm that's not going to be a book that I knock on because a bunch of people like it because I bet it is really good. 
I just think that I would have trouble getting into it. So. Hmm. All right. I can, I can deal with that. Where would you put him on this top eight list? Oh, Stephen King. Yeah. Oh man, that's tough. Cause I feel like he's kind of like George Martin for you. Like people don't realize how much you like them. I do. I know. Cause I, cause I don't ever talk about them and it's because they don't like Martin doesn't release anything anymore. And King, I haven't read him recently since being on booktube. So I don't talk about them much. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, why would I people, I mean, people don't know that I read him because I've never been invited to talk about the dark tower. Um, never mind that I literally was one of the OG dark tower readers before any of those freaking, but well, it's, I mean, that's not true. Before the amazing adaptation. Oh no. No, like, <laughs> like I was reading them when Wizard and Glass was released. Like my friends and I were so happy it released when we were in high school, and then we had to wait forever for freaking Wolves of the Kala and then all the other ones. Um, but I've never been invited to talk about the Gunslinger, so um, we I should do that. What we should talk about the Dark Tower because I barely have talked about it on my channel. I had I did a chat with Baron and Sarah, and that was it. I've never uh, never really gone full bore into it. I have a lot of opinions on it. Um, Hmm, that could be that could be a fun video. We should do that. I have a lot of opinions. I think we're pretty aligned other than Song of Susanna, and I understand why you hate it so much. Um, Anyone I have never met. And this is it's not as if I've met. Thousands of Dark Tower fans that were reading them as they were released, right. but I have never met someone who was reading the books as they were released and waiting a year for the next one who liked song of Susanna. I've never, I've never met someone. I mean, I think that's, that's a totally fair thing. Uh, yeah. Being a binger. I loved it, but yeah, if I did that, like the thing is, even if it wasn't my favorite, I wouldn't hate it. It would just be a 200 yeah. page, like, like speed bump in the way to the dark tower. But when you waited a year after wolves of the Kala for song of Susanna, and then you had to wait another year plus for dark tower after it, I hated it. I'm so angry. Um, it's like a slap in the face a bit. Uh, and lost discovery asked if I put Oda on the author. Well, I did not because Alan watched the anime. So I didn't yeah, know if he would read, feel like I, I was an idiot that. for adding it. So I didn't add it. Um, you know what? That's fine. You can put, you know what? Put King at four. I'm confident we're going to get someone I like a little better King, but, and I will, I'm, I, uh, I'm not ashamed to put King at four. Okay. I think I, that, that's, that's a solid spot for him. I was thinking three or four for you. All right. And your next one here. Oh God. This is just really paving just the worst. Okay. John Williams. A three. Just going right at the three. Like it's, it's not, it's not five. <laughs> I love your wheel, by the way. There's so many traps, not traps, but like more interesting, like ones that I obviously don't like as much. Instead, you're giving me all of my top authors or even ones that like, yeah, like I was hoping maybe that you would end up getting like John Williams, Terry Pratchett, like towards the end. And you're like sitting there like, oh, where do I put these? I think you would have Look, left Abraham's too. still on there and I haven't filled in eight yet. So I could end up at the end with Abraham at eight. I would just like to see you you know have to deal with it like that that's that's really what the whole uh, yeah whole and y'all could ruin my life and take the one thing i have for me by forwarding a picture of my favorite with abraham at eight send it to daniel abraham so he'll never <sighs> he'll never come on my channel again sarah j mass is your next one I'll just sarah <laughs> he's been this is, there. you this can is not her, going the way i want you can put her in honorable mentions Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you can't deny her reach. I know. You can't deny her reach or Oh my gosh. I can't I can't even with that man. Um what's next? Herman Melville. <laughs> I love that Herman. <laughs> I love that Melville's on there. <laughs> you, go uh, ahead I... and put a... you know what? I like Moby Dick better than Rage of Dragons. You put it at number 6. <laughs> what's your have you read when are you reading moby dick jimmy i want to talk about whaling i mean if you're if you're down to talk about it i'll read it next after i finish anna karenina i'm down that could be my are next you reading class. Anna karenina right now yeah very very slowly Word. like very, very amanda is not with you on uh on moby dick <laughs> what is that, people hate moby amanda, dick is that boo for moby dick moby dick is amazing 18th century whaling who doesn't love 18th century? Women? I really don't understand it. Like, I don't get it. 
you kind of commented on all the authors, but I'd like you to say something nice about Evan Winter. I don't I don't think Rage of Dragons is a bad book. Um, I like I think some stuff is implausible within fantasy. Oh, you really think that there's dragons in real life? No, I don't. Um, but I, I think I think the fight scenes are well written. I I I, I like the fight scenes. I, I do too. That book. I I did not I did not actively dislike the book. I think the conceit of how he powered himself up violates the in-world rules that are established early on. Like, I don't buy it. Um, and that's that's my main problem with it. All the people who are like, well, it's just too much of a training montage. That doesn't bother me. Like, the fact that there's too much fighting, there isn't for me. I The fighting doesn't bother me. It's the fact that in-world rules that are established early are shattered. And not just like, the line isn't stepped over. The line is crossed. He pops in a balloon with Phineas Fogg, sails around the world, and laps the line with plausibility. So. <sighs> Good Lord. The look amount at of... all these people. Look at all these people who hate whaling. Why don't y'all go join Greenpeace or something? <laughs> Damning with faint praise. <laughs> Uh, June 2024. So I finished Anna Karenina. Now it's Moby Dick. Yeah, I mean, it might take me that long. I, I'm enjoying Anna Karenina, but I am not ever, ever making myself pick it up. So if it doesn't get, it's like the last priority of, of my reading list. And I'm just not forcing it. It's kind of what I'm doing with all my books right now. I'm reading slower than ever. And it's awesome. Oh, um, Amanda's boo is on my SJ, my Sarah J. Mass. Link. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, she made the top eight, top eight, Alan's top eight favorite authors. I mean, See, I, I can still get that knife in there. That's hundred um, percent true. I there is only one spot can. left and the last person has been spun. Do you who want to take, my, I'll, I'll give you two guesses at who it is. I have no idea. Put my fifth favorite author. Who is it? Type it. Can I Type one that? letter. Type one letter. Is my internet going in and out? I mean, yeah, because I don't see anything. Type one letter. Uh, I haven't typed anything. Okay, I'll do a P. It's P. Uh huh. Who have I read that starts with a P? Hold on. Give me one more letter. Picard, comma Jean Luc. How did you know? P H P H. Whose name starts with a P H? Don't look at chat. Do not look at chat. F F That's not a name. F Do not look at chat. I'm not. Um. F what? Oh, oh. <laughs> I forgot that PH can begin Philip. So I guess Philip is my is my fifth. Philip Chase author. makes his top five. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Philip Chase is my fifth favorite author. Um, I had Stephen Erickson there, but I mean we all know that Philip has uh, toppled Erickson from his throne. So <laughs> Faz Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not a name was definitely the best thing that you had. <laughs> that was I was weird. all I could think of was like Greek and Roman names. Well, of course, of course, that's what you thought of. I couldn't think of any other any other combination of pH. I was like Phydro, like Plato's Fido. Like no, um, anyway. there is a lot of people who will sit there and say Moby Dick is one of the greatest novels ever written, and The Way of a Dance says Move Over, Herman, Hermy. Need Look, first of all, there are a lot of people who would say that Moby Dick is the greatest, one of the greatest novels ever written. None of those people are in this chat. <laughs> They're not. They're not. I hope you like that little activity. I thought it'd be fun to kind of pin you against yourself. That was um, quite fun. That's cool. It was quite fun. Next time I'm on, we should have the the new version because I like to release I like to release updates on my ten favorite books, basically like every six weeks or so, just so people aren't out of the loop. Well, you got to keep people updated. Things change fast here on the internet. It's age Especially internet. with the wide breadth of authors that I read. So who knows what might change the next time I'm on. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give everyone a little behind the scenes here. Last year, Alan hit me up at the end of the year and he said, Jimmy, I'm, I'm nervous. And I said, what's wrong, Alan? And he said, I got to do a top 10 list. And I don't know if I read 10 <laughs> authors this year. 
That is true. That is true. That's a true story. That that was that was the end of 2021. Last year I did. It was, yeah, the, it I was think two it was years ago. The end of 2021. I like I was like, oh my gosh. Because most of what I read was KJ Parker. <laughs> you said I think I think I don't remember you read, but it was like 90% KJ. I know. I that's when I read all of his short fiction. Oh my god. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you some of the other ones that were on the list. Uh, George R. R. Martin, Daniel Abraham, Richard Swan, uh, Ian C. Usselman, uh, Mont, uh, Brian McClellan, Martha Wells, Ari Salvatore, Sebastian de Castell, Josiah Barencroft, Adrian Tchaikovsky, Tchaikovsky, I always say it wrong, Chicago. Tiago Adala, Curtis Craddock, Glenn Cook, James Cavell, it's, it's a wheel I have to look, John Gwynn, Pierce Brown, M.L. Wang, Rebecca Kwong, Stephen Man, Aaron, I lucked out. If you Bernard Cornwell, what's that? Oh, Brando Sando was the last one. I Who? lucked out. You know what would have been the most painful thing for me would would have been having to put Brian McClellan in the number one. I that's dude. That was the one. I know everyone knew Sarah J. Mass, but I was banking. If I had had, if I had had to put, if I had to put MCB uh, on the on the the top slot, I, mean, I would have. I guess I'd just go go have to. Um, ask Bookborn if she can arrange a meeting. I was hoping that also you'd have to put Tiago at the bottom and then you'd have to d- explain to him why you put him so low. Like, I'd be like, Tiago, but you're on, you're on my top eight. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It's like MySpace, right? Yeah. Michael uh, I, wants to know for a first time reader where he should begin with KJ Parker. Um, uh, I don't know. I need to know the other books that you really like. Tell me the other books you really like, and I'll be able to tell you if you should start with like The Siege, which people tend to like as a starting point, or if you should start with um, Folding Knife. I always say it's Folding Knife. If you don't want to read a, uh, a complete novel, then Purple and Black, the novella. But if what you normally read doesn't, I don't think it would jibe with the Folding Knife right away. I would probably suggest 16 Ways to defend a walled city. To defend a walled city. Yeah. Yeah. People seem to really like that one. I uh, I, I think I'm gonna do purple and black next, for, and then probably folding knife. And then I bought the the novella that I found at the used bookstore. Remember, I sent a picture of that. I can't remember which one it was. I think it's one of his metaphysical religious short stories. Is it something. cutting the wings off of angels? I think so. Uh, it was uh, like a what, sub what, edition. What color is it? Oh, it's a sub pressed one. It's not that one. Then what color is it? Is it yellow? Uh, or is it yeah, it's like a yellow orange. I think. Oh, oh, that's the long game. That's the long game. That's one of okay, the worst I have to enjoy. Oh, nice. I got it for $15 and I was like, oh, I'll get this. And I figured worst case, I would send it to you. But since you hate it, I guess, you know, I'll just keep it. I have it. I can use it as a doorstop or something. I have it. I have that version of it. We've compared, we compared numbers. That's right. Cause I sent it to you that day. That's yeah. right. I, uh, I was glad Philip made the list because I'm reading the profit of a Dan also very slowly. And I gotta, t- I gotta say, I'm liking Philip's book two more than his book one. And I, I like it, book one. Is it doo doo butter? It's, uh, it's, it's this. You know, it's obviously the same world and stuff. But I guess I'm just more in the groove with what he's doing because yeah. it is, it's going by pretty quick. And he has long chapters. Um, but he introduced a new character that I really, really liked, and definitely went about it a different way than I thought it was going to go, which Word. is really cool. Um, so that that's exciting. I'm, I'm really uh, excited to continue that book, and I'm happy for philip uh any audiobook updates for the way of a dan you know what i love jimmy i love thank you for um so i i haul around this baggage and um every day like i have to make sure the sword of damocles doesn't fall um um and i just for a moment on a friday evening after a long week at work i wanted to just kind of forget where i was and have a good time chatting with my friend and, uh, you know, why, please remind me about the biggest, the biggest, uh, burden that weighs upon my soul, uh, right now. Thank you. I won't sleep well tonight. I hope you're happy. I, I, I thought you were doing it in summer vacation. Yeah. <laughs> you did too. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I did say that. I, I will say this. Oh, no, I, I, I'm going to say something about Philip. Philip Chase is an extremely understanding person. Um, I, I, I struggle with activation energy and I also struggle with things that are overwhelming because I don't know how to break them down into pieces. And I also struggle with things that I think I'm going to be bad at and I'm going to be run off the, I mean, I'm people want, people don't want, don't want me to do booktube anyway. So maybe this is my key when it's really bad, they'll run me off the internet and I can just retire to, to the, the, the obscurity that I so richly deserve. 
Uh, so all of those things make it really difficult for me to start, but I've slowly been, and I have to, like, I have to sit there and I have to like, I have to sit with things for a long time and like kind of work up. I need to know exactly what I'm doing. So I don't get in there and fumble and then give up because I'm too, I'm too exhausted, but I have set up. I did not realize what a pain it was going to be to set up a place for me to actually be able to record. And so I've had mm -hmm. to do a, a bunch of stuff that in July, I thought I did not realize how little actual free like time to myself I was going to have in July my uh you know Finn was here for two weeks I know that angered you as he is your nemesis yes. um he uh he was here for two weeks and then literally the mon he left on a Sunday the next day I had to go to um Kurtaman, which is Latin quiz bowl camp, which there's never been a nerdier sentence uttered than that one. I had to go to that. <laughs> and then two days after that, I had to drive kids to the national uh, Latin convention. And then I was in school. So, um, so I didn't have any time in July and I thought I was going to have to have, so I have set up the studio, like I set up the studio the way I want it. And I think it's going to work. Um, and so, um, did someone just say wah at me? I know someone in the, I, I'm going to assume that that's, that's not meant the, that that's not meant the way that I read it. Because if someone just said, wah at me, <laughs> we need to make sure that you and I are <laughs> that, uh, that we have that kind of relationship. Um, but, uh, so I, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm afraid of being terrible at it. So I am planning like Philip is very patient and he's understanding that once I start it, once I start it and um, send something to Philip that he approves and says, this is good, then it will be significantly easier. And once I have done one, because I don't think anybody understands unless you do them. So if Andrew Meredith is here, anybody that does audiobooks, you completely understand. But if you don't, you, you don't understand. <laughs> you don't just sit there in front of a microphone and record. Uh, what do you do when you screw it up? Oh, my gosh. It's going to take forever. It's just gonna. It's yeah. just going to take a long time until I get good at it. But eventually, once I figured out all this and figured out how to use all the stuff, and I'm accustomed to using it, it will go significantly faster. And as soon as I'm finished, I'm going to start the second one. So the second one will come out. The first one is not coming out as soon as we wanted it to, but the second one will come out very soon after the first one because once i have one under my belt i will know how to do it you know and it's not like i have to reinvent voices i have them you know like yeah. i've got the 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 you know the, the day raven must go must escape from from the the evil priests the way of a dance they are trying to convert you hurry i also i love you and oh oh my gosh leave me to where we need to go i'm afraid that's what I hear um, when I read uh, Prophet of the Dam, by the way. That makes me so happy. That makes me so happy. That's what you hear. Um, and yes, I talked to Kevin Kemp. I did talk to Kevin Kemp. Yeah. Um, he, was out of, he was out of commission for a while because he had a baby. I did talk to Kevin. Um, and he's helped me tremendously. So, so yeah. Um, so soon. Soon cool. TM. Soon TM. I'll, I'll probably send you one of the... Um, I'll send you a chapter when I'm done. And you can be I like, would hope you would. I'll be yeah. like, you can be like, it's butt cheeks, Alan. I'll be like, oh. All right. Well, I guess I mean, I'll be you. honest with you, but I think you're going to do a great job. Uh, Christian wants to know after you're done, can he launch a Kickstarter for you to redub all of one piece? <laughs> so Christian, when the four kids dub, which was the first one that came out, came out, my friends and I, cause I was in, I was in Japanese class in college at the time. And, um, yeah, this was like the heyday when I watched uh, a lot of anime and I had a bunch of friends online and we literally researched how to fan dub um and we held auditions and everything because we were literally thinking about doing that exact thing fan dubbing it because of how terrible the four kids dub was um and then we didn't because if you missed the beginning of this conversation where i said it sounds it's just overwhelming that we shouldn't do it um so there it is i like uh the viz dub i know that's not a popular thing uh to say but I actually don't. The Viz mind Dub it. is infinitely superior to the Four Kids Dub. I don't think the Viz Dub is bad. The problem with the problem with the Viz Dub, and um, no, 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 David, the sixth greatest show on earth. Um, what the problem with the Viz Dub is the same problem that all English dubbed anime has that has a young male protagonist. 
the young male anime slash JRPG voices, they are done by women. And that, and there's nothing wrong with that because Luffy's Japanese voice actress is also a woman. But oh, I didn't something know that. About yeah, yeah, it's it's like it's an older woman too. She's so good. She's so good. Um, but that is that gets lost in translation. Like, and it's not the language; yeah. it's just the way that we act versus the way the Japanese act. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to be king of the pirates. Like, it's just so grating. And every young character in JRPG sounds like that. Every now and then I will watch an anime dub or a JRPG, and I will be like, they had a young child dub this. Thank you for, dub for having a child dub this child because it sounds like a child instead of an adult acting like a child. And so Luffy's voice drives me. I don't... I have no problem with anyone else's voice in the dub, the um, the Viz dub. Have you watched the Four Kids dub at all? No, I haven't. No. This is Sanji. Oh, hey, uh, the the Luffy. We're gonna go and uh, see. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go stop uh, Don Krieg right now. Uh, You're now hearing first takes of Amar from the Way of the Day. <laughs> hey, yo, uh, Day Raven. We gotta hurry up and get out of here. This girl's got a big bosom. I'm going to hang oh, around for yeah, a little bit longer. I'm going to have a roll in the hay, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Sounds like a Sopranos extra. <laughs> That's right. Um, so I did not like, I don't, like, I, I just don't like those. Um, I don't, I, I never like that in the animes and I, in the animes, in the anime or in JRPGs. I just don't like that specific uh, voice acting trope that is so incredibly common. Um, everything else in the Viz anime is fine. Um, yeah. But it also yeah, might be because I'm a, I really, really like Luffy's Japanese voice actress. Yeah, I've listened to the sub uh, for the last few episodes that I've watched and I, I've actually gotten into it pretty well. Uh, you know who else had a female voice behind the, their character was Tommy Pickles from Rugrats. And I always remember yes, that. I didn't know that. I didn't. And I was a kid when I found out and it like blew my mind. Like, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> like, I for sure. Understand. Um, the the other said, thing, hold on. The other thing that's um about the the One Piece dub is I don't know. I'm pulling a Mitch McConnell here, where I'm having a stroke <laughs> on camera for eight seconds. Um, 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 first of all, why does why is America a gerontocracy? Can you explain to me why we have actual and 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 I, and I mean this in the most respectful way possible i am not trying to belittle people's conditions i'm not so it may sound like that but i'm really not i'm not trying to we why do we have invalids in congress like that's like like that's not there's no reason that we should have people with dimming mental faculties running the country and in a in a in a in a, in a country of 300 or almost 400 million people to octogenarians is the best we've got that we we look at everyone around and we say you know what those two they represent everything that's great about america they're the best we have you know what let's let, we're the shining city on the hill just look at them look at their rotting corpses that we're standing up like weekend at bernie's i uh i enjoyed that pivot that was a crazy pivot from luffy is voiced by a female <laughs> Sorry, I, I I was just saying Mitch McConnell is too old and needs to get out of Congress. Those of you in Kentucky, stop voting for him. Um, and that goes with that with the Democratic senator who is wheelchair bound and doesn't even talk. Like has to like. I'm not trying to be insensitive, but it's just like we take people's driver's licenses away, but we don't take away their ability to pass legislation for the country. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, Heidi said Andy Circus has a video on YouTube showing how uh, he did the Lord of the Ring audiobooks with different microphone placements. That would Andy probably be Circus cool. has enough money to have a recording studio. I have a closet, and it's not even a big closet, it's a like single aisle closet. There's no, there's no multiple angles, there's one angle, and it's right at my face. Hi, Murphy. Oh, okay, good. Hey guys, the second biggest show is in town. So now you've got Bridger, you've got number one and number two, both in the chat. You guys are here for a, what a historic occasion. I'm so glad I could be here on this, uh, this, this confluence of Titans. 
uh, and witness their, their discussion in the chat. Thanks for having me on, Jimmy. I appreciate that. It's good to see you, Murph. Uh, <laughs> also, yes, Tommy Pickles, voice actress, also played Dottie in Pee Wee's Big Adventure and rest in peace to uh, Pee Wee Herman. Um, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I love Herman. watching Pee Wee Herman uh, whenever I was young. One of my uh, friends from wrestling was very close um, to him and was into improv and stuff. Oh, really? Really hard. Yeah, his name's RJ yeah. City. He's, he's, he's a phenomenal talent. He was on the Canadian uh, Nickelodeon channel. And was a phen phenomenal pro wrestler, but he was friends with David Arquette and uh, Pee Wee Herman as well, which is pretty cool. Also, I wanted to highlight this, Alan, because you're so ungrateful for all the people who do watch you uh, when you come on the channel. You know what? Uh, you're right. I, I try to be as ungrateful as possible. <laughs> well, Ty uh, Tyler said, sorry for being late. Just jumped over from watching episode number 29 of Chatting with Nuts with Alan. Nice to see you both in the past and present. My Speaking question to you, Tyler, was okay. he more mad then or now? <laughs> you're in a good mood um jimmy yes i need you to reply i need you to the next one use a different picture of me for the thumbnail and you know, I, I almost I've been meaning to tell you this for literally the last six appearances <laughs> and i always forget until i'm like ah, he's already made the thumbnail it's fine and there's nothing wrong with it it's just like when i first started booktube like i had i i, I my teeth are fixed like I needed, I, I, I didn't have dental insurance for nine years and that's what happens. And you might like, I just had to have a bunch of dental work done. And so your picture is me before I had dental work done. So, you know, my, my teeth are chipped and stuff, which is fine. Like most, my first like year and a half on booktube is that, uh, but like I have like my teeth are fixed now. So you should you put a picture nice of me with my fixed teeth on it. Well, can you send me one, but I want you still doing this. Cause like I have like dimensions that I have. To oh keep. yeah. Sure. <laughs> How did you chip your teeth? If you don't mind me asking. Um, so I have a slight, um, overbite. So my, um, my bottom teeth, basically every time I bite, scrape out the back of my, um, of my front teeth. It's just carving it out slowly. And I first chipped it when I was at, still living at home and I was trying to, I was trying to grab one of the cats and they ran under the bed. And I like dove for it and I like hit my mouth on the like um, oh. the bed frame and it chipped my teeth because again, I was, oh they were thin God, already. Dude. I know. So they were thin already. And so periodically I'd go to the dentist and the dentist would like sand them down, but then they would chip it. Like he would sand them even, but then they would just like get so thin. You could see through the bottom. You could see through the very bottom of my teeth. Like it was like misty transparent because they were so thin. Um, and so then it just, then it just chipped and, um, they couldn't sand it down anymore. And he's like, we're going to have to like, first of all, you need all these root canals in the, the part of the mouth that we can't see like back here and all this stuff. So oh. I got all those root canals done. And then he didn't think he was going to be able to fix these. And I went, um, to like a specialist, like periodontist. And he was like, yeah, you should just have all of them pulled and have them replaced. And I said, I am not, I guess I'm just going to have chipped teeth in because I ain't going to do it. Um, because he did not think because of the way my bite is, he didn't think that he could um, put these crowns in. Um, but he's like, I'm going to make it work. And he did. And it's perfect. And so like I, um, I used to be really self-conscious about it. Um, and then I didn't care quite as much. But now I like it way more and i'm just and i asked my wife i'm like i'm like i met you and my teeth were wrong like why did you ever like date me and she's like what stop being stupid i'm like okay um so yeah so now um and yeah. she got she got the glow up alan i mean you 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 do look i mean even if you watch some of your older videos i feel like you just look healthier like in general and, like I think okay so of i'm gonna go ahead and let you know that that is a pattern since i was young um, I like Benjamin button or no, like, like it's not like I'm <laughs> aging backwards because I'm dead. Cause I, I wasn't old when I was younger, but like, if you, as you continue to look at pictures of me, like I look the longer we go, like the healthier I look, uh, which is weird. You're just figuring it out. No, there's nothing wrong with that. You're going to peak in your fifties. It's going to be great. Oh, oh, so, okay. Well then in 10 years time, Jimmy, maybe I'll cap 40, 45,000 people watching this. <sighs> listen you talking about chipping your teeth off a bed frame literally made my soul hurt mm -hmm. like that is so i i chipped uh this front tooth has a chip in it uh from getting curb stomped into a ladder in one of my last matches um <sighs> which was a mistake like it was one of those things i volunteered for 
And then like I'm in the position during the match and everyone's yelling and I'm just, I'm just out of the moment and I'm thinking in my head, you idiot. And then wham. And I remember I just hit it right off the rung and I felt it crack and I thought it cracked my whole tooth. Thankfully it didn't. It just chipped a piece, but there is, oh. a, there is a scene and you're going to know exactly what scene when I start, when I even want to start talking about it. I there's, already a know. Scene, there's a scene in the movie that I've like, I have rarely n- n- ever wished that I hadn't watched a movie. Um, I'm just like, when I watch scary movies, I get scared and I like check the check under my car and the back seat when I'm driving home at night. And <laughs> do you really? Shower. I do for like a week, for like a week after I do. And a I week? Get, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and then I'm fine. But American History X and the scene where they curb stomp that guy, they make him bite the curb and they kick the, like, I, like, I can't, no, just shoot me in the face. Like, just shoot me in the face. It's fine. Yeah, and, and just the whole scene and everything that goes into it is just like, oh. Jimmy, I don't remember anything about that movie other than Edward Norton as a skinhead. Because I had an Edward Norton phase where I really liked Edward Norton. I just watched all his stuff. I, like um, I don't remember a single thing about that movie other than Nazi Edward Norton other than that scene. That's that's it. It's the only thing I remember. I, I uh, Man, the movie's tough, but it, it is a uh, well-acted, well-written movie for sure. Primal I, Fear is his first role, and he won an Oscar for it. Absolutely exceptional. Absolutely I love that. Exceptional. Exceptional. I think he's fantastic. Me too. He, I, I think he got, I think he got a little uppity. Um, and Did he? It's, I think he's difficult to work with. Yeah. That's why he yeah. was replaced off the Hulk. Certain color M and M's in his jar in his dressing room. If, if that is your, like, seriously, like if that's, if that we've, I think we've talked about this before. And I think people in the chat said they do it to make sure that people read, have read the whole contract, um, which if that's what they're doing, then then i understand that kind of clever um, actually i kind of like it i mean no if like if you're like ugh, you're too arrogant if you do that um i've never seen the sopranos so i wouldn't know but Tremendous. that's horrible one of the funniest shows of all time even when it's not meant to be it's so so good i uh i went and saw speaking of horror movies i went and saw talk to me which is an a24 horror film and i thought it was pretty good uh i get you know if i had to rate it i'd give it like a eight out of ten but I was really disappointed because people said it was as, as good or better than Hereditary, which I think is one of the best horror movies ever. Like, I, I think it's like top 10 material for sure. Um, do you watch horror movies often? So Alan, first no? of all. Hold on. Someone said something that I wanted you to highlight. Oh, Kev. <laughs> Kev. Word. Well, word. he lives. He lives somewhere where he should check the back. See, look, his- look, as, with all the things that I say on the Internet and in my classroom, I got to check, too. Um, I can't, I, has anybody seen urban legends? Anybody oh, so seen like, 1998? I yeah. no longer can listen to total eclipse of the heart in the dark. I can't wow. because Good there's record. a murderer behind you. Y'all know <laughs> what I'm talking so about. Bad. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I love that movie, dude. Yeah. Ugh. You know, they made more. They're all, they're terrible. Yeah. Um, they did um, like a two and a three. So I used to love, um, horror movies. I, used to, I watch them a lot. Um, I used to watch them a lot. I don't anymore because Christina mm. does not and will not. Like she is just not, she is not going to watch a horror movie. Like there are, there are like, there were episodes of law and order that get too intense. Like, and she's like, yeah, I, I don't want to watch this. Um, so she is not. So because she doesn't watch them, uh, it means one, if I had to watch them, I have to watch them by myself. And that's not fun, really. Um, so I haven't really watched the only horror movies I've watched since uh, I've been da- since I've dated Christina, which was five years ago, um, is when I was in the hospital, when I was at rehab, I was by myself and I was like, I'm probably not going to get murdered in a crowded rehab facility. So it's probably safe for me to watch these movies and I don't have anything else to do. I can't <laughs> walk, so I might as well watch. So I watched Scream 4 and 5, um, which are the on- only um, horror movies I've watched in the last five years. The last horror movie that I watched and really liked, what some of that's not true because I've seen It Follows. Oh, it was good. I liked it. It was. Anyway, that, that's not recently. Um, anyway, The Conjuring, because it wasn't just a horror movie, it was a good movie. The I Conjuring with um with Ron yeah, um whatever his name is. I know you're talking about the guy from the guy from Office Space. Yes. Um that was a really good movie. Now when we talk about horror movies that I like, The Conjuring is one of the kind of movies that I that I should that I don't normally like. I don't like possession movies. 
at all. Like, I don't like movies with demons. I don't like possession movies. I don't like those at all. The movies, the horror movies that I used to like, um, I like Scream. I love Scream. I love Scream 2. Um, so I like the Scream movies. And I love the Saw movies uh, because those oh, are man. ridiculous. Like, and I can't actually watch them all. Like, I have to do like, ah, 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 ah. Like, I have to because it's, it, it's, it, it's too much. But I watch the Saw movies because of what the reveal is going to be at the end. Oh, it's going to be ludicrous. It's not even going to be possible that it could happen. And I don't care. I don't care. Like, I don't care. If freaking Evan Winter had reveals like that at the end of Rage of Dragons, I, I don't care how far over the line you go. Like, because I don't care. Like, there's no way. There's no way that crap can happen. None. I don't care. Evan Winter was a little more like Saw. You'd Look, be getting five stars instead I of three. I love yeah. Rube Goldberg machines. And I love like, like ludicrously forethought, uh, like super villains. Do you want to play a game? Live or die. Make I mean, choice. the first Saw movie is arguably one of the best horror movies ever, right? Like it's, it's tremendous. We, we, if you cut the leg off, we can pr probably g g get up. You should do video game narration. Like you would do very well. Like Dang. that's the all video game. Look, the bar for the bar for JRPG voice acting is historically low. Um, <laughs> they, should, they should let me in on that. <laughs> Fever wants to know quickie, no explanation. Ridley Scott movie on. Uh, you say it. You're smart. Trajan or Hadrian. Trajan. I thought I was right, but I didn't know if I should say the J like that. Because Tra Trajan? Trajan. Or <laughs> Hold on. Is he making a Trajan or Hadrian movie? Uh, maybe. Possibly. I have no idea. I know he's making Gladiator 2 for some reason. I'm going with Hadrian. Look, Jimmy, after yeah. Maximus kills Commodus at the end of Gladiator. Oh, I mean, whoa, whoa. Sorry. sorry. I know I had a ton of questions left unanswered. So, <laughs> do, you you think like, fight, do you think he'll fight in the Coliseum in this one? You were like, hey, let's do it again. There was just I, a I, noise I, outside my window. <laughs> Sounds like you uh, might be playing another game tonight. <laughs> Live or die, make your. I'm gonna be like, die. So, like, there is nothing die. I would like more for than a home invasion to happen while you were on stream. It would be amazing. What? <laughs> Like a good old, just a good old fashioned B and E. No ring cameras, none of this. B and E. Allen on the floor, lead pipe, just hitting them in the shins. Why taking that dandelion dynasty set behind you? Because you're never gonna read them. Those those editions? No, I'm not. Well, I'm not gonna read them. They're beautiful. I have a uh, paperback of uh, Grace of, Grace of Kings. That's the first one. Yeah, those trades are really nice too. They're very floppy. I enjoy it. Maybe I don't want you to have a B and E. I I, I realize that I, uh, that I might be wishing that. ill on your family. I appreciate that, but like maybe a fake out, you know, like a like a fake B and E. Yeah, yeah. Like Bookborn just comes in and is like just oh making sure you know I have more subs than you. Bookborn you know doesn't I mean? have the Bookborn doesn't have time for that. She just hire someone to set my house on fire so she can laugh on the ashes. <laughs> Jimmy trying to farm views. I just start sabotaging Alan in real life. <laughs> well, unfortunately, not enough people watch this stream, so it wouldn't actually goose your viewership. Goose? Fantastic. So, um, hold on. So, okay. So, when I did Influencer Alan, I, at some point, I, when I say that in there, I, when I worked at GameStop, and, I, and and this is going to show my age, is when the Xbox 360 was coming out. It wasn't out yet, but the Xbox 360 was going to come out. And the one of the, I don't know, big wigs at Xbox, his name was Jay Allard. And do you want to know how he spelled J? J-A-I? No, just the letter J. So it was Jay Allard, and he was very proud to show us his gamer tag. Like, he was so proud that he pointed and said, my gamer tag, I'm hero protagonist. 
which you know is what the main character from what Snowpiercer, something like that, right? Like it's a famous literary main character. He was very proud that he has his nerd cred, that his his gamer tag was hero protagonist. But he comes out, and this is what he says. These are the exact words, and I wrote them down, and it came back to me as I was filming that, and I said part of it in there. And I have been searching for the clip. I have found the press conference that it takes place in, but I cannot find when he says it. He says, "Okay, so." We made up a prototype, we, and then we took it, and we goosed it, we tweaked it, we spun it, we fabricated it. And every time that would come on on the GameStop TV while I was working there, I would turn to one of my coworkers and I would say, what does that mean? What does it mean that they goosed it? Which, from my understanding, is when you stick your finger at someone's <laughs> butt. Like, that is what I understand goosing is. We call that an we oil goosed check it, in we, we tweaked it, we spun it. We fabricated it. So what? You made it up? You lied? You lied about it? You like, what does that mean, Jay Allard? And I still to this day don't know, but I have remembered that for 20 years. I have remembered Jay Allard in his stupid hoodie and his dumb earring that I'm supposed to associate with being hip like a gamer. And he goosed it, tweaked it, spun it, fabricated it. What? Get your freaking mic off your face. Oh, I hate Jay Allard. Grow some hair. He's a big fan of the show. So, Jay, if you're out there, I'm sorry. If Jay um, Allard was actually an audience member of this, I would feel so bad. I would feel so bad. And I would have to say, you know, I owned an Xbox 360 instead of a PlayStation 3 for many years. Um, I went through, I owned four of them because it kept red ringing on me so clearly you didn't goose it tweak it spin it or fabricate it enough allard i uh he is in fact a fan of the show but he only watches um the bigger episodes. oh you're um, right he watched murphy's <laughs> and bridger's cwn episode that's why i didn't that's why i didn't know you're right you always gotta right. have you know there's an a show and then there's a b show it's like raw and smackdown for wrestling like you gotta have one to kind of get them in the door and then you oh, hope 100 well bridger i mean bridger's the pay-per-view one so next time you have oh bridger yeah he's on, summer you slam yeah, you gotta you gotta charge like thirteen ninety nine to have access to that one. And You're more Murphy, like a, Murphy's Monday Night Raw, and I'm freaking the TNA Sunday local night wrestling heat. at the gym of of the YMCA in like you know Louisville, Kentucky. Your TNN WWE Velocity. I don't even know what that is. So exactly. yes, that's what I am. Actually, it was a great show. Uh, <laughs> just just in case anyone was wondering. Thank you. Uh, Oh, that's rough. That is, oof. Can't take that back, Kev. That's oh, that's, Kev, that's rude. Kev. My God. Oh, Kev, man. Wow. Alan, what are you reading right now? Do you still read? <laughs> oh, my gosh! Did I just read the opening chapter of Shalon from Way of Kings? Murphy wants to know why she's getting dragged into this, and I, I would like to also know why is she catching strays, Alan. I didn't say. Did I say anything bad about Murphy or Bridger? I guess you complimented them technically. You were saying that they're like so, the marquee. Like, so shut your mouth, Jimmy. <laughs> I didn't Perfect. fire any strays. Alan, just, my tone Alan. sounds like I'm insulting. Like my tone sounds like I'm going after them. <laughs> you got to work on the tone. I got to work on the tone. Hey, welcome to 41 years of my life. My parents telling me that like, hey, you have a tone. I'm like, I know. I don't, I don't mean to. <laughs> She says, I'm just over here playing Sims, enjoying the shouting. I hope your Sims drown. No, I'm just kidding. Dude, some people get really attached to their Sims. I don't, I don't hope that. Kelsey loves the Sims. Loves it. Christina does also. Christina I had, to buy, also. I had also. to buy all the expansions, and I was like, oh, not a big deal, sure. And it was like $130. I was like, what? Christina loves the Sims. Her and her sister come over, and they just... They they say we're gonna have a Sims party. I'm like, what does that mean? Can y'all play together? Like, no, we're just gonna play side by side. And I realized that I it sounds like I was making fun of that. After, but then I I then realized that it sounded like I was making fun of, except for the fact that for the first two weeks in July, my friend was at my house and we literally moved a television next to mine and played video games side by side. So in 2023, um, do what in 2023 you did this. Oh, no, no, 100%. It was this past July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not saying that it was 10 years ago. No, yeah, I just want people to know that you're doing it still, which I think is great, actually. Oh, 100%. Are you kidding? Um, I love it. Actually, games. this is a good opportunity for me to say, uh, Andrew, who's my best friend, and uh, me and him do dudes talking manga together. Uh, we will be doing stuff 
here in two weeks because he's going to come stay with me for three days. And Alan, I can't tell you like how envious I was of you and Finn that I was like, well, I got to do that with my. Intro. I know. And now I'm going to be envious. Stupid I Andrew. Hope I hope you are. Jimmy. <laughs> Fly me up to DC. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. I found this place that makes a meatball sub. Oh, my God, Alan. They take a baguette. And they dig it out. And then they put the meatballs and they put um, Fra Diablo sauce in it. And then they just cut or vodka sauce. I'm sorry. And then they put the bread back. So it looks like you're eating a loaf of bread and then you bite into it. And it's like, it's crazy. It's really good. I'm very excited about eating it again, as you can tell. Why are people using like they're using trench warfare on your on your <laughs> sandwich? But it's all made in house, dude. Like it's 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 excellent. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. I would take you there if you came. Do you like meatball subs? No, God, you're the kid that just ate chicken fingers, weren't you? <laughs> I just graduated that kid. Actually, I was slightly better than that. Um, but I mean, not much, but I literally, uh, one of my really close students, one of the Rachel's, um, is that kid that just eats chicken fingers <laughs> and she just graduated. Make me sick. What? All this, all this food out here and people just eating chicken fingers over and over and over. Weren't you just asking me what I was reading? Yeah, yeah. Do you still read? Was the question. It's a two-parter. <laughs> part two is dependent on the answer to part one. No, you started with part one, but it's dependent on the answer on the 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 answer of the second one. Um, yes, I do still read, Jimmy. Um, I do still read. Uh, the thing that I don't do is make videos about having read. <laughs> that is what I don't do anymore. Um, but yeah, I still read. I'm reading. Um... <laughs> I like how you answered that very seriously. <laughs> like, I do, in fact, actually still read. <laughs> I do. I, I, oops, I am reading Daughter of the Empire by Janny Wirtz and Raymond it? Feist. It's quite good. I am in a section of the book that I don't like. And it's because, so I love the, I love the political maneuvering, especially in the first four to five chapters. And then, I realize that a plan is being run, like a gambit is being run. I do realize that. I don't quite yet understand what the end goal of said plan is. It seems bobo dumb to me. Um, and so depending on how the plan ends will determine whether or not I, I hated see. this section. Um, okay. Because either it's brilliant and I'm like, okay, I get it. I get having to you know, deal with this. Like we got to we got to deal with the stuff that's going on currently. Um, so I'm hoping that I end up because currently I don't like it. Like right now, the part that I am in, I do not like it. But that can be edited if I end up liking the part that comes right after this. How, how far are you in? About halfway. OK. OK. I mean, it could be a Saul situation. A what? A Saul. Like you said, you like the crazy reveals at the end of Saul. Oh, right? I thought you said Saul. I'm like from Breaking Bad. Like. I wish. That's a good show. <laughs> Books of Vegas Con says, just catching up. Isn't there a time dilation that explains the range of dragons power up? Question mark. I um, can't remember. It's not yet. I mean, yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that they have demonstrated that what he is engaging in literally breaks hardened warriors psyches. And I could, I could buy it if it was like, two or three times dabbling he's the he's the protagonist so i get it he can withstand more that's fine um but very anime the, the amount of times i'm supposed to believe that his psyche doesn't break no i don't buy it um so so yeah um do you know what part i'm talking about Darry? because do you know what part that i'm not enjoying even a little bit it's because if you do then then good i hope the, then i i feel confident that the plan is good um I've, I've always wanted to read that trilogy. It was on my list last year, but then I replaced it with Wars of Light and Shadow because I'm more interest, interested in Jenny Wartz than I am Raymond Feist. No offense to Raymond. I know he's a big fan of the show, uh, but, you know, uh, I replaced it. But Wars of Light and Shadow is on pause for me, so now I kind of want to go and try that trilogy out again. It's good. it's good. I haven't been, like, I haven't had a bunch of time to read. Um, so most of my reading, I read the first chapter, and then I, uh, I've basically listen to it on my commute that's basically all the reading i've had time to do um recently i haven't finished a book this month like at all how's the audiobook is it good the audiobook's good the audiobook's good she's okay. she's good um 
yeah, she's good, which which makes me happy because it's a female audiobook narrator. And all anybody's ever heard me do is complain about the only female audiobook narrator I've had, which was the one for Age of Ash. And it, the problem with the Age of Ash lady is that every sentence sounds the same, like the cadence is the same. And if you if you listen to even the, the audio sample of Age of Ash, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And it was just super distracting for me. I wasn't mm -hmm. bad. I just didn't particularly enjoy it so i like i like this one um it's always weird i mean it's weird as a it's weird as a dude um as a guy he, when women do like 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 deeper male voices and i'm assuming that's just as weird for a for a girl hearing yes. a guy do the higher female voices so i mean that's that's not her fault just like it's not the guy's fault for the other thing um that's just the fact that i'm a guy and you know and and it's a, it's a female author um so it just sounds weird because i know like oh, that's not how men sound um so roy detroit roy detroit's De Detroit's? Why, don't, why can't I say that? Uh, whenever he's voicing Daenerys sex scenes in A Song of Ice and Fire is the worst thing that's ever happened in audiobook history. Oh, Dario! It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. Please stop. Oh, I don't like that. He was terminally ill, just acting out these coming of age of a woman finding herself, and you're just like, Roy, this ain't it, chief. <laughs> what the that is... That is nasty. Rest in peace to uh, Roy. Uh, Key says, how do you like Book of the New Sun? Uh, I started Shadow of the Torture. I am on chapter 21, and I am loving it. I love, 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 love it. I was very nervous. I was not going to like it, but I was in the right mood, so I started it, and I adored it. So, uh, Alan, I know that you're supposed to read this. You are not going to like it. <laughs> Why am I not smart enough to like it? Am I nope, not? Do I, I not have I, enough views to like it? No, not at all. Um, I I could see you appreciating some of the stuff, but you've already kind of voiced to me that you're suspect about some of the Latin stuff. You know, like I get it. It's like if I were to get a bunch of wrestling references in a book, and I'm like, uh, okay, I get it. Like, haha. Uh, Look, me being me being. Um, like it is ludicrous for me to criticize fantasy books or sci-fi books that use Latin and Greek and Roman inspiration stuffs, because then I just wouldn't be able to read fantasy because that's, that's, that's literally everything. That's true. Um, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy. Yes. I've been asked to have an intervention. Um, you know that you can still hang out with like Philip if you don't like book of the new sun, right? Does Philip like book of the new sun? I know he's read, reading it, but I ha I haven't watched. Oh, stuff maybe on. he doesn't. That would I don't know. That would completely discount my argument. You don't have to pretend to like this pretentious book so that your pretentious friends will hang out with you. I know. I, my pretentious. I have many pretentious friends who don't like Book of the New Sun. In fact, name one. <clears throat> he got me. <laughs> <laughs> You could have said me. You could have been like you. You caught, yeah, that would have been the the appropriate, but that I would have been fair. That would have been fair. Um, no, I I have no idea if, if I'm oh gonna Amanda doesn't like it. Oh word, you Amanda has good taste though. Which hey hey so Amanda, weird. Jimmy just straight up calls you pretentious. How do you feel about that? I thought you guys were friends, Jimmy. Oh, oh come I'm come not. on! I just said she had good taste. You called her pretentious. I'm just kidding. Um, I, you're not the first person who told me how, I'm not gonna like it. Um, it is short. Which is always good. No. Yeah, see Amanda. Amanda, no, no, I am not. We are both for you, Amanda. <laughs> she and she said it's true though. <laughs> if you like Chatham Evil and you rank the Iron Council high like we do, I think you get that label no matter what. China Evil is weird bug people. Oh, there you go. Dude, China Mavel's weird bug people are the jam. And the perpetual train in Iron Council is sick. It's so yeah. cool. Um Tyler said he just finished out of the torture last month. Excited to hear your thoughts, Jimmy. Yeah, I would like to make a video about that. Um, Alan, I, I it's a really hard book to tell if you would like, because there are some things about it that remind me so much of a song of ice and fire and the way that it's worded mm -hmm. that I think that you might like that piece a lot. I just, and I don't know how I feel because I'm only halfway through the book and I will say I, I'm enjoying this middle part, but I love the beginning. Like the beginning is one of my favorite beginnings of a book. I just thought it was tremendous and I'm, I'm still enjoying it, but I'm like, okay, where's this going to go? Yeah. So who knows what I'll feel by the end of it, but obviously Gene Wolf is 
rather intelligent. He's a lot smarter than I am. Uh, Fantasy Fanatic, I've already read the Combat Codes. I read it when it was a self-pub. I have the new revised, pu- traditionally published version. I don't know when I would get to it. I am very curious to see if he made any changes to book two did and three. Did you really read Combat Codes? Are you serious? I yeah. did a I did a review. I did the cover reveal in a gi, in a jiu-jitsu gi uh, for the third book. When? Oh, Since two I've years ago, you? nobody watched it. Nobody watched Since it. Since I've known you, yes, no, yeah, no, yeah, dude, yeah, really, yeah. And I'm, I gonna, go in a for, I'm gonna go put it on in the background and in contrition. I put, I did it in the gi. Um, no one watched it, which is fine. Uh, no, I'm gonna watch it right now. Um, but he has made significant changes to book one since it was a traditionally published book. Really? I had a feeling that it was going to be a successful book. And it had got mentioned in the New York Times this week. So I'm thrilled for Alexander Darwin, who is a black belt in jiu-jitsu, by the way, uh, and is a terrific human being. I love Alexander Darwin. Uh, I've chatted with him about many a things other than books, and he's just a good guy all around. So super happy for his success. I would like to read the revised trilogy. I'll probably wait till they're all three out. And then uh, I was planning on trying to maybe have him on chatting with nuts at some point, if people would be interested in that. Uh, Jimmy, he is of course brilliant. people would be interested in that. You think? Yes, because it's 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 a it's a chatting with nuts show that I'm not on. And and to be fair, Alexander Darwin's more famous than you now. Oh, I know. Oh my goodness. All right, let's see if I, can I Oh no, Midland said he D oh he DNF book in the new side. I thought he was, was gonna say he DNF combat codes, and I was like, oh no. Rip. I went to go look up something and I forgot what I was going to go look up. Uh, probably me. Hey, Kev said he watched it. I have it actually here. Let me see. Can I, do I get copyright struck on my own videos? Is that a thing? All right, let's see. Can everyone see this? Can y'all see this? First off, look how small the patron list used to be. Shout out to the OGs back down here. Holy cow. I'll be dang. You did. I see oh my God. God. This is the worst. I look so much younger. By the way, sick cover. Uh, the new cover for the traditional club. Sorry, Alexander. Don't like it. Don't like the new covers at all. I'm wearing a jiu-jitsu gi, Alan. You see how amazing this is? I do. You You're wearing know. a jiu-jitsu gi when you review the combat codes also. Yes, uh, because it was during lockdown. And I was like, well, I better put these on. I haven't put them on. And I forgot how to tie my belt, <laughs> which was great. Good book. Very, very good book. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, Alan, I actually think you might like it. Um, the only thing I had a problem with is that he has an in-world swear that he uses uh, ad nauseum. That really drives me crazy. Um, what but, is it? Uh, Darken. Like- Which at least is sharper than something like Storms. Like Darken at least kind of sounds like So F-ing. like what? Those Darken kids? Yeah, which doesn't have the greatest feeling when you say it right doesn't doesn't feel great weird like i don't i don't really understand. it's there's a whole thing about light and darkness and and yada 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 um uh, however the i actually like the plot um i enjoyed most of the characters and i really 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 enjoyed um all the combat he wrote because he actually knows how to write combat which is great like hand-to-hand combat that's awesome that's essentially like, like imagine world wars being fought in solo combat that's it. Like you represent yours. I represent mine. We fight. And then the arena in which we fight in has, they're different depending on where you are. So the arena changes. Is and like, a, I think there's an anime similar probably. to that. There's probably. it's a not, I guess not common, but I've definitely seen the conceit in anime of uh, anime characters representing nations. And they fight often in like Gundams, like robot suits, mm-hmm. uh, mechs. Are there mechs in it? Uh, yes, there are mechs. And I want to tell you that his number one, well, I shouldn't say number one, but one of his biggest inspirations are old Final Fantasies. That's awesome. There's chocobos in it. They're, they're riding birds in it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Are they called, what are they called? Chocobots? They're called chocobos? No, I can't can't remember what they're called. I was like, and Square Enix doesn't know? They need some money nowadays. He is a massive JRPG fan nice you would honestly probably like it i think you should try it i don't read remember <laughs> oh shit you're right it's one book a month like one jimmy month. my whole why do you think i have so much so much pressure on me i have to keep spinning i gotta keep 
the smoke and mirrors going before people realize that I don't actually read anymore. It's so one I of the greatest to... grifts I've ever seen. Honestly. I mean, look, sucker born every minute, Jimmy. <laughs> Someone's got to take their money. And it's gonna be... <laughs> uh, that's that's not true. <laughs> Everyone, I'm not actually grifting you. I wouldn't know how to. Um, I am going to go use the bathroom. Hey, God bless. Good luck. I hope it all shakes out all right for you. <laughs> Alan's doing that thing where he's pretending he's frozen. I was. I yeah. was. It was. It's always good. You almost always get me with it. That pleases me. Uh, I'm going to oh. check out the chat. Jake says, couldn't comment before, was driving. It's funny that you were worried you were going to dislike Book of the New Sun because I was not worried at all about whether you would like it. Have you told me that before? I'm very curious. Also, why? Why did you feel this way? Um, kind of curious. I had a lot of people tell me Book of the New Sun was going to be one that I would enjoy. Uh, and I think it's mostly because of the vague language in which Wolf writes a lot of the story, uh, which leaves it open for like multiple interpretations. I'm a really big fan of that. And it might be the most extreme version of that. Kind of like how people say like Erickson's the extreme version of Show Don't Tell. And I, I love it. I feel like that's kind of Gene Wolfe with his vague statements and writing. And it's also no surprise that I feel a little bit of the um, inspiration on George R. R. Martin because George R. R. Martin is a massive Jack Vance fan. And Jack Vance is like almost a direct inspiration for Book of the New Sun and like the whole idea of a dying earth. And in this weird setting, uh, it, it's very similar to Dying Earth that I read from Jack Vance. So doesn't surprise me at all that, that it kind of reminds me slightly of the way that Gurm sprinkles stuff in. I mean, it says I love Shadow and Claw, but then I got the sword and decided I was wrong and DNF'd. I'm very curious how it's going to go. Shad, I can't tell you why you were not on the Patreon list two and a half years ago, but if it, if it's probably my fault, I, I apologize. It's <laughs> very interesting. Would really like to, uh, how he used language. I probably told you you would really like it, but may have forgotten to. You, you may have. I get told I'm going to like a lot of things, so it's hard to keep. Um, Kind of hard to keep it all in order. Mitch says, when are you reading Bernhardt there, Jimbo? Tomorrow? Who's Bernhardt? Do you know who this is, Alan? Who's Bernhardt? Sandra Bernhardt? I, I don't know. Yeah, Wolf likes to hide things in plain sight. That's a really good way of putting it. Uh, there was a piece of, in the first half of Shadow of the Torturer when it clicked about what it was. I, like, I, I was damn near screaming. Like I wanted to just toss the book up in joy because I was like, that is crazy that he did that. Um, those moments are very rare in reading, uh, and to suspend kind of disbelief for a little bit, uh, is, is always a welcome thing for me. So Jake says, we haven't had a voice chat since I read it. So I may not come up. Well, I invited you on chat with nuts. And then you told me that you'd rather, um, do anything other than come on chat with nuts, which I thought, wow. um, she was only Evie says, Jimmy, how are you liking boy parts? I'm starting it uh, next week. I'm going to Denver for work. So I will uh, be reading it on. The what way. is boy parts? Uh, it's a hot girl fiction, which if you haven't checked it out, go check out StoryTube uh, here on YouTube. Did a wonderful video about hot girl fiction and what a hot, hot girl books. But Alan, the best way I can describe it, it's kind of a vibe. You know, and I know you love when people say that. So, you know, yeah. it's just kind of it's kind of a thing, you know. It's a verb. It's what you do. The protagonists of hot girl books are traditionally thin, cisgendered, bookish women who are having a ton of sex. Yeah, it sounds just like something you'd want to read, right? I can't wait. Where can I find one? <laughs> so I will read the synopsis for Boy Parts, which was my patron pick of the month, by the way, because like 20 people added it as their, uh, <laughs> as, <laughs> as their book. So here it is. Uh, Irina, I hope I'm saying that right, obsessively takes explicit photographs of the average looking men she persuades to model for her scouted from the streets of Newcastle. Placed on sabbatical from her dead end bar job, she is offered an exhibition at a fashionable London gallery, promising to revive her career in the art world and offering an escape from her rut of drugs, alcohol and extreme cinema. The news triggers a self-destructive tailspin centered around Irina's relationship with her obsessive best friend and a shy young man from her local supermarket who has attracted her attention debut not uh, debut novel from eliza clark a pitch black comedy both shocking and hilarious fearlessly exploring the taboo regions of sexuality and gender roles in the 21st century 
Oh, uh, you know, let me let me tell. I can't think of anything fearless, uh, anything more fearless than making a sexual reference in media somewhere. Because look, I've never seen that in popular culture. It's like back in the '90s, all the people with barbed wire or like Asian character tattoos. Nothing is more countercultural than that. Get out of here. I have to also say, Evie and Amanda did a stream, and seeing them two together uh, talking was amazing. That's awesome. Go check out that hot girl. Uh, no problem. Hot girl video as well. The hot girl revolution was started on Evie's channel. This is this is actually a factual statement. So I'm excited for boy parts because I happen to Why? very much. You're excited I, about it, I, dude. I like that kind of. I like those books. I like the My Year of Rest and Relaxation by uh, uh, Otessa. I always mess up her last name, so I'm not going to try it. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. I loved it. Like that gross, dark, pitch black. I kind of like the pitch black humor uh, from a girl's perspective. I really enjoy. I know, okay. I know that it's not your thing, but it is certainly something that I'm. Uh, I should say that I've liked what I've seen. So maybe I'll read boy parts and hate it, but I think I'm going to like it. I got range, Alan. I like a lot of things, you know. Yeah, it's not, it's not just all swashbuckling. I think you you overestimate how many books that swashbuckles out there. Like, <laughs> there's not a ton of swashbuckling books. There's like Ivanhoe, Three Musketeers, The Great Coats. Is Robin Hood swashbuckling? Okay, I thought so. Hey, Tad Williams is writing a Robin Hood type story in Memory Star and Thorn's world after he finishes out the series. So you should Robin try Hood that. Sucks. I don't like Robin Hood. Guys, what can I do? What I'm can I do? To you. Robin Hood's a criminal. Oh my god! You're 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 defending the elite. Is it, am I getting this right? Am I getting I, this right? I'm the not. Super because, waving Soviet over here. They were all they were all douchebags, so they deserve to lose their loot. So I take it back. <laughs> Amanda says Jimmy's range puts him slightly above Alan in the best living booktuber list. please no one ever tier rank me ever it will i won't be able to handle it i don't have the self-confidence for Look, it. that's quarter of the ninth there like i mean sanderson would put you above me for that very reason yeah and that and my number one review of all time is for wave kings so i think he I think that's he shocking appreciate. not a lot of people read that <laughs> it's like literally one of my worst reviews i'm ashamed of it it sucks i will that's how that's how it works right if i get your discworld video recommended on my homepage one more time i've already watched it all the way through and liked it and still, it still keeps still has fewer views than bookborn's discworld videos well i think she just understands Discworld more you know i mean i mean basically yeah no i know i mean i know like i've i mean i've been reading terry project for a long time um like I wish I had the ability to like come to fully appreciating understanding his works in such a short amount of time. Um, because, you know, I could have saved all the time that I had, but it's taken me longer, you know, different speeds for different people. Um, but, you know, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> I think, I think you're on the right track. David Sloan says in that review, you said it might be the greatest fantasy book you've read. I don't think I said that actually. I think I said that I thought, that this was setting up something where I could see him being mentioned with like Tolkien and other people, which I still stand by uh, because there's not many other people doing a 10 book epic fantasy series right now to the scale of what he's doing. And I, I still stand by that. Um, do I think it's one of my favorite book ones in a fantasy series? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But it's all, it's also really hard to say this because it was what three years ago now. Um, my taste has changed a lot too. I am rereading Wave Kings, and uh, you know, I still like it a lot. Maybe some would even say love. So, but no, it's not the greatest fantasy book I've ever read. Words of Radiance is better than Wave Kings. So, Curtis Seven says, "Who are your top five dead booktubers?" That is horrible. <laughs> oh my gosh, I misread that. I read that as, um, "Who's your top five dead authors?" And I didn't realize until you clicked on it that it actually said booktubers. <laughs> I had to put it on screen because of the, just the audacity to type it out. I was like, you know what? Fair enough. <laughs> Lost in Discovery says, where's the Lost in Roshar plug, Jimmy? If you want to check out episodes of Lost in Roshar, where we're rereading Wave Kings, you can check it out on Lost in uh, Discovery's 
uh, YouTube channel, and you can also check it out on podcast platforms as well, but only if you've read all four books. Hello, longtime viewers and commenters of Streaming with Chatting and Nuts, Chatting with Nuts. How many times have you heard it be suggested that Jimmy and Alan do a regular podcast on this channel? Um, please note that uh, Jimmy never had any time, and all of a sudden, lo and behold, look at this. There's a there's a, there's a Stormline Archive po uh, podcast that uh, seems to be quasi regular. Um, quasi. The, the... <laughs> I love the word quasi. <laughs> so. Uh, um, that's a that's a nice little Easter egg for the people who have uh, long time students of the Chatting with Nuts lore, uh, right there. So we'll now return to your regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so Alan is right. Alan is right, <laughs> and and what I will say is is I think it was a six month gap between the suggestion of a podcast to doing another podcast. But my defense to Alan is irrelevant. Was, but my, my my defense to Alan was when would Alan have time to do this? Well, I mean, maybe if you asked. <laughs> Look, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. You're my bride right now. I mean, only because you couldn't book Bridger Murphy, book Born or Philip. Hey, it's a busy weekend. I mean, I, I know, know how many I know. people are out of town. I, I know. Had to go deep. I know Philip was in freaking Nepal. Oh, well, I, hopefully he never comes back. Um, <laughs> Philip, I, Philip actually did maybe narrowly escape being eaten by a tiger after I made a joke that I hope he got ate by a tiger. So that's why you don't wish bad things on your friends, folks, because it could happen. Just like I wished a B and E on Alan earlier, which was rude. You did wish a B and E? You no, you didn't just wish a B and E. You would B and E and me being assaulted in my home. That was probably where I took it too far. Um, I would just like to see you back in PT. You know what I mean? I hate you. That was my favorite Alan. Was confined no! to a bed. Humbled. Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> humbled. Yeah. I'm well, I'm well known for the high opinion I have of myself, Jimmy. You're right. <laughs> Top 10 arrogant booktubers. I'm one through nine. One through nine. It's all your different personalities. You've You're right. Different. You're right. It's all, it's all the algorithm chasing I do. And when I think of you, I do think of the algorithm. Uh, Mitch says, Alan, is it true that Jimmy is ducking your invitations to talk about the first arc of the Black Company? And he doesn't have time, Mitch. He doesn't have time. He's doing a podcast. This is not true. I have to read Silver Spike. And I thought Silver Spike was a novella. It turns out it's a full-blown installment, and it's 350 pages. You don't actually have to read Silver Spike to talk about the first three books. I thought you wanted to. No, you did. I realize now it's just a delaying tactic why you set up this new podcast endeavor. No, you told me I had to read Silver Spike. You said read Silver Spike and then before you read Shadow Games. I didn't no, say no, it had to be this. You told me you said well, you'd read the read Silver Spike and then I'll I think you said you'd read the rest of the series with me, right? Sure. I say a lot of things. Duffman says a lot of things. <laughs> Duff Duffman's feeling new feelings. That would <laughs> Jesus do. <laughs> it's one of my favorite when he gets saved. It's so funny. <laughs> Oh, dude, Jake. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about Black Company. I'm down. I'm down. I could do the first three books. Um, but I just uh, thought Jake, we, I Jimmy wanted to leave you out of the discussion. I made sure, um, as a man of the people who does not have my own podcast and thirteen thousand subs, I made sure I that you podcasts. were included in the discussion. I have two podcasts. Uh, <laughs> technically three. Oh, you know. I'm, I'm so sorry, Doctor. Doctor. Person you, you can't call. Uh, it's, this is Mister Nuts. I'm sorry, Doctor Nuts. Dr. Nuts would be a hell of a title if I could get it. Okay, Jimmy, I'm going to say something. No, I'm not. No, say it. No, no, no. When we, no, 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 because I don't want a gift. Um, when we get, <laughs> when we get off uh, chat, uh, l let me tell you what Eric Yang said um, at, and it's not, it's not like it's super, super inappropriate, but it's inappropriate enough to where I don't want a gift. So um, when we get off chat, make sure, make sure I tell you the Eric Yang story. Okay. Okay. I'm very it's, curious it's, what Eric gangs up it, to. It, it is amusing. Um, how are you liking Water Seven, Jimmy? I just started Long Ring Long Land, which is like the hardest name for me to say for some reason. Uh, and it is hilarious. I'm only like a little ways into it, but oh my god. Is that where is that where Foxy is? Yes. Usopp is killing I love Foxy. me. 
I love Foxy. People hate the Foxy arcs. They feel like really? they're crap. I love Foxy. One of the lamest villains with one of the most overpowered devil fruits. Like Foxy's fruit is so powerful and he is such a dweeb. It, I, the such whole group dweeb. has been so funny. Every time they insult him, he like falls down. It's like, did he say he doesn't like me? It's so good. <laughs> Like if he could just believe in himself, he could maybe be like a power to be reckoned with. But in fact, he is a doofus and it's Who? awesome. Foxy. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. Like I love Foxy. Usopp is killing me in Water 7 though. Like I laughed aloud last night um, when I was reading it. Good. Um, it's a good arc. It's a good arc. It's a lot of people's um, – that and Enoch's Lobby following it um, is a lot of people's favorite. Um, it's – I mean it's passe to like uh, Enoch's Lobby. So I, being a um, man of culture – uh, it's not my favorite. I like it, but you know, plebs. Uh, Innie's lobby is the is the arc of the plebs. Um, <laughs> Murphy I typed out the left. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing, dude. It's I it's been. It. I didn't. Um, I didn't see it written down, but I can hear it. I am so excited to read Water Seven and post Innie's. Like I'm very very excited. Um, this is the one that people keep telling me about. So, but I'm already enjoying it regardless. So. Hey, hey guys, guys, do you know who hasn't told him about Water 7 and Enos Lobby? Me. Do you want to know why? Jimmy does not talk to his friend, Alan, who true. he knows has watched One Piece for 20 years. He does not talk That's to me true. about One Piece. This is he, has other one, he has other One Piece fans who are bigger One Piece fans than me, basically. I mean, he knows plenty of people who have been watching it longer than 20 years. This is not true. Uh, so they must be they must be bigger fans than I. Guys, wait, wait, wait for the podcast version of the One Piece talk. I'm sure it's coming soon. Well, I was gonna wait to the end, but uh, you know, announcing <laughs> you can I I thought you were I literally thought you were about to do a Jade City thing on me again. I, like I thought you were literally going to tell me that, and I do not know. I, if I could have been responsible for my actions, like I don't think I could have. I don't think I could have been. Like I think, literally in court, they would get me off of whatever crime I committed because of extreme emotional disturbance. You know what I remember the most from the Jade City surprise? You are no. not being serious right now. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> that sounds like me. That That's soundtrack. Me. That, sounds, that sounds like me. <laughs> the fact that you're scarred. <laughs> that sounds like me. I cannot believe you did that. I cannot, I cannot it took me so long that. to track those down. Oh my god! All the freaking One Piece like fanboys who love Usopp so much. Usopp objectively sucks for most of the series. Like he just does. Like he's nowhere near as cool as any of the other main characters. He's maybe maybe you could put him above Chopper and Sanji, and maybe even Frankie, just because Frankie's not as. Uh, uh, as old school as Usopp, but all of the people are like, oh my gosh, you hate Usopp? Usopp is literally God tier. It's like, stop, stop being basic. Like, stop being some what? kind of weird anime weeb. Like, What's stop. Usopp? What? I love Usopp. I didn't say there's anything wrong with Usopp other than he is not the best. Usopp's lame. He's the funniest. He's so funny. You don't think yes. he's funny? Usopp is amusing. No, I agree. Usopp okay. is amusing. Usopp is amusing. I also like, uh, I'm like, his powers suck. He is useless in almost every fight. And someone's been like, no, oh, remember the one? I don't care. Usopp sucks. He sucks. Him and Nami and Chopper tend to be dead weight in all of the combat. And it's like, what are y'all doing? Like, and, and I love Nami and Chopper, but they are useless. And Oda doesn't know what to do with them. They are useless. And it makes me sad. Hmm. Okay. What did Murphy say? Uh, she said, stop listing crew members. I actually missed it if he did. So that's good. What? Because I said Frankie. Frankie. Sorry. Frankie. Frankie. Frank. There's a character named Frankie who I like better than Usopp. Wow, he must be amazing then, because Usopp's the best crew member. I mean, it, according to all the One Piece fanboys on your videos. Oh, sorry, on the video that me and Christian and and uh, Patrick did. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. All the I get. Yeah, I get way more. Usopp isn't cool because I always say he's cool, so I get comments saying that he sucks. <laughs> Oh well, tell you. I think there's just so many people that watch it that you can find someone has an opinion any way possible. That's, I mean, way. that's I mean, that's like it's like Stormlight or Sanderson stuff. It's like, way bigger than Stormlight, though. Like, I mean, I agree with you, but Stormlight once has adaptation, but but 
Oda doesn't have any, he doesn't have any range. Like he's just done one piece. So, I mean, that would, that automatically lowers him down on the best, um, <laughs> on the best manga car. <laughs> Tyler says, thank you, Jimmy, for the berserk content, by the way, it would have been a bit more of a struggle to get through the series alone. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm glad. Uh, those are some of my favorite videos. Cause I got to do them with Andrew. They're just awesome. Uh, not a many people watch them. I'm uh, also going to, I'm hold on. I'm going to go ahead and cut in here and say, if you read one piece and you don't know when you read an arc, which of the people they meet is going to join the crew. You've never read a manga before in your life. You've never seen an anime. You've never played a JRPG. It is not like they don't, punch you in the face with hey look big sign crew member crew member crew member crew member crew member it's only happened one time where it was super obvious who was going to be a crew member and then they didn't take that person as a crew member that's happened once there's one time where it's like this person's totally going to be a crew member and they don't every other time it's like hey look crew member crew member crew member crew member <laughs> give you this i love malcolm in the middle i uh i think I know who's coming from Long Ring, Long Land. I think. I think it's pretty f fairly obvious, but I don't think I know the person's name yet. Um, this person says, not having ever seen or read One Piece, Usopp sounds like the name Aesop, brother from Aesop's fables, except Usopp's fables misled children. And that is very spot on. You got it, I believe. Oh. That, that makes sense, Murphy. Like, if you haven't played a ton of RPGs and haven't watched a bunch of anime, then yes, then I would I withdraw that statement. That literally, I mean, that literally is true. Like, if 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 you're not, you know, super into the, the Japanese, yeah, <laughs> not a weeb, yeah. I mean, basically, like, there's a word for this. I'm looking. I, I know. I try to avoid it if possible. Like, you don't understand. All I did was play JRPGs, and you know. I watched so much Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z, oh. like so much. And then Gundam Wing, uh, Zex, Marquis. And someone tell me who's seen Gundam Wing. What is the freaking, there's a weird name of like a city or a plan or something, or maybe someone's name. Someone has a really weird name in that. Maybe it's like someone's real name. If you've seen Gundam Wing, you know what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, I'm about to go search Gundam Wing. Give me a second. Um, otaku? No, you're an otaku. Uh, oh, that's the word. The, otaku. Otaku is the Japanese word for weeb because they can't really call, like, oh. you know, Japanese people weebs because weeb implies you really like Japanese culture and you're not. You're not. A, uh, uh, you're not Japanese. So oh. otaku are the Japanese like mega fans it means like mega fan they're the people who go to the akihabara district and buy all the like the waifu statues and pillowcases and stuff um and have like the boob mouse pads where it's the anime girls and like where you rest your your wrist is like gel pads of the anime girls bosoms what those are real things go look it up go look up anime go look up anime girl mouse pad right now just google it no it, 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 no why it's it's not naked it's just like you'll see but there's like that that makes me uncomfortable see, uh kevin knows <laughs> kevin knows about the boob mouse pads chris 131 says troa no it's not troa it's multi-syllabic um anyway continue on continue on. anyway anyway so it's it's possible that it's not obvious so jimmy i apologize if i spoiled your crew member uh, you're okay. I'll probably forget. I've been spoiled on so much that I've been called out by Murphy over here. I get, I keep forgetting what people have spoiled at this point. So I'm good. I, uh, I definitely just stopped reading most comments on those videos as well. Cause people just love to tell you what's happening <laughs> and what's going to happen. Um, Jacobson says, Alan and nuts. Have you read Peter F. Hamilton? I have not, but I have Pandora star on my TBR and it's downstairs. Trey's Kushranada. Thank you. I love Trey's Kushranada. He is the best character in that show. Trey's Kushra freaking nada. I will certify Alan's uh, love for JRPGs, by the way, because every time I boot up my PS5, every single time Alan is online playing some game of like eighth in a series that I've never heard of. And when I look up how long the game is, it's like 280 hours. And I'm like, this guy can't read the way of Kings. But he's on eight of Tales of Steel or whatever it's called. I'm, I'm like, Alan. playing Langrisser one and two. Thank you. Yeah, like, dude, 
I don't even know if they're dubbed. Okay, to be fair, I don't actually turn my PlayStation off. It, like, goes into rest mode. So it's possible. Like, right now, if you went on your PS5 right now, you would probably see that I'm online, um, even though I am clearly in here. Um, <laughs> but you're absolutely correct. I am. My weed <laughs> credentials are, are pretty. <laughs> like, I will look it up, and it will have, like, a 4 out of 10 on Metacritic. <laughs> <laughs> that's because that's the masses reviewing it they don't understand great art <laughs> and then alan's just over there grinding away like this is the best thing i've ever <laughs> always always i am like i don't like i'm not the anime we because i've never watched a ton of anime like it just happened but i often forget that jrpgs they're just anime like they are like it's the exact same tropes and conventions that anime has. So I always defend my weeb credentials by saying I don't watch a ton of anime and I ne I've never read a bunch of manga. I don't watch a ton of anime, but I have played more hours on JRPGs than anybody should ever play on any game ever. Like I just I've just played them for my entire life for. And they're always really long. I clocked in on trails for, trails into reverie. Oh, I don't want to boot it up. Something like 175 hours or something um, <laughs> before I finally 100 percented it. I haven't worked that much at work this year. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure I have either. <laughs> uh, Tyler wants to know if you played the Persona series, which I know you have. All um, of them. I'm All playing Persona them. 4 right now, and the soundtrack is banging. It is a banger. 4 has it's the best so soundtrack. Good. Uh, no, no lie. The most weeb thing I've ever done is last night when I was reading One Piece, I was humming the Persona 4 theme and I was like, something's wrong with me. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. 100 percent. I completely agree. Um, yeah, I've played all the Personas, including the terrible port of one for the PlayStation one. Um, two is better. I think they're remaking one and two, which I am so excited for. Um, one and two aren't aren't like three, four and five, but. Have you ever thought about making a video about like your favorite JRPGs? Or, I like, have. Why you Michael, like Nip it? Michael Nip and I have made uh, have made that video. Yeah, you started a podcast without me with him. I'm not sure I knew you then. I knew you. And also, I didn't start a podcast. I thought you did. You guys started like a channel and stuff. No, there was a channel, and my, Mike was on it all the time. But what I was happened? like, I can't, I can't commit to something once a week, so I couldn't do it. Wait, say um, that one more time. I said I couldn't do it once a week, so you could, you couldn't commit to it once a I week. I couldn't commit to it once a week. No, I don't no. like I don't I don't I don't okay. like committing to a lot of things. Um <laughs> my wife doesn't know that my fingers were crossed when we said our vows. Um <laughs> just to just to kind of like just to just to give me some breathing room. That's not true. Please don't go tell Christina that. That's not true at all. Um but uh that was two years ago, Jimmy. How do you know She's a I big fan of the, the I thought you were in the sunroom. No, she's watching. No, she ain't. She's reading a book in the sunroom when I went to pee. How dare you not support the channel, Christina? I'm hurt. Yes, how dare you? I'm hurt. How Girl. dare you not support Chris Jimmy? <laughs> I'm your favorite booktuber. I mean, this is that's this probably step. true. That's probably true. Come Adam says world. you guys should do a video game stream together, and I agree. I would love if we play Baldur's Gate. Play video games? Are you kidding? I would play Baldur's Gate three with you. Okay, let me tell you. Off. If we did a video game stream together, here's what we'd have to do. It would have to be called the first three fourths because you, we would never talk about the ending of a game because Jimmy doesn't finish any video games. It's not. Totally What's the last weird. RPG you finished, Jimmy? Elden Ring. No, no. Uh, um, Bloodborne. I, I played it after Elden Ring. Bloodborne. When? Uh, like a couple. That was ago. relatively recently. That's and cool. and Wo Long. Thank you very much. Wo Long. You didn't play. You did not play the expansion with us, Jimmy. I did not. I don't have any interest in revisiting at this point. I don't think. <laughs> Why not? I heard it's super hard, and I'm just like, I don't know if I care. It's so, it so hard. It's so hard. Oh my god! I Philip. cheese it by. I cheese it with icicle drops. Philip, Philip, I'm glad you're here. Um, for those watching after the fact, Philip has just showed up into the live chat, and I want to show uh, Philip. Alan ranked his top eight authors of all time earlier on the stream uh, with with a gun to his head, and I want to see. I want you to see this. I think this is. I did. I did. I did rank. Uh, that that is not the whole story, as far as um. No, that's it. No, he got it. Uh, that that's it, right here. Philly Chase coming in at 
Number five, you beat out Moby Dick, Philip. So congratulations. I, I think Philip will find it more interesting that Sarah J. Mass is my eighth favorite author of all time. That was a surprise for all of us. But, you know, I think <laughs> you brought up some really good uh, points about how face sex can really speak to <sighs> multiple classes of society and and how that is an undercurrent and how we're repressed by the elite. I think I thought you made great points. So, I mean, I am often making points about being repressed by the elites yeah <laughs> and face sex that's that's your other big thing i know you're no, very I hate, I hate that particular part yeah, you're very into that um <laughs> alan loves loves love triangles confirmed yes I, def I definitely do not like love triangles confirmed folks would you guys like to see me and alan play through boulders gate 3 which is essentially dnd on stream together with our custom characters where like the choices really matter. I think people would love that. And let's be honest, booktube D&D is never happening. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It's the I have, third I, summer in Jimmy, a row. Jimmy, I got the books out two weeks ago. <laughs> so we might start next year. We might. Oh, my God. Murphy said, I'm learning so much about Alan. Yes, I'm definitely being 100% factual. People want us to play VG3 together. We should do it. I don't know how that works. Uh, we'll set up an account and we'll stream and we'll have voice comms. And you're right, Jimmy. It, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about how the game would work co-op. Oh, it's oh, it's hilarious. It's going to be amazing. Their co-op is insane. Me and Kelsey played the first one on the couch together. Tremendous. So fun. Jimmy, I'm not going to let you pick the choices. Oh, no. The way it works is we both get choices and it can like splinter. It's crazy. What? Dude, this game's wild. Like we wild, can, wild, wild. We can both get the same choice and choose different options? We'll have different dialogue based on who we're talking to. What if we both talk to the same person? That I'm not sure of, but I do know, supposedly in co-op, your individual decisions should still affect your individual character's arc. Like there's a group dynamic and then there's a solo. It, the game is crazy, man. Like Larian is, I know you're apprehensive and I understand, but Larian is. I don't think you understand how slowly I play games like that. I'd like them. If, if we're no, streaming. no, you're going to be killed because you're going to get jumped by a party because you've gone on because I'm still clicking on every object, grabbing like yarn and putting it in my. I collect later. everything. Okay, good. That's wow times just okay, so you good. everything but then you have to you have to wait this is why everyone's always like uh, alan stream like go you should stream something when you're playing i'm like no one wants me to because here's what happens when i i am either when i'm consulting a guide so you'll see me walk around do something and then i'll just stop my character will just stop there and it'll just stand there or and it's because i'm looking at i'm looking at a guide or or i'll be talking to christina and i'm fidgeting so my character will just run in circles like this. It'll just run in circles like this. So you'll just see, all you'll see is a stream of me running in circles like this and hear me in the background talking to talking to my wife, running in circles like this. All right, hear it me would out. not be interesting to watch a stream with me. me we should do a test stream where we create our characters. We do a character creation because you got to fill out the whole stat sheet and see how it does and then go from there and see how we like it. Jimmy, I don't want to play a computer game I don't like playing games on the computer. No, you, you can play it on PlayStation and, and stream it. It's all built in. Oh, you'll play PlayStation 2? Yeah, I'm not playing on my I, I, Yeah. Duh. I love playing on my couch, for sure. That's why I'm so jealous. I had to wait an extra month for the game, which is annoying, but... You're going to you know do what? it, aren't you? you You're going to do it. Stream, I need to stream Hades, because I hear that game's hard, and I'll just die a lot. You definitely will die a lot. I played it a good amount. Um, not my type of game. Not a big fan of the repeat stuff, the runs. Oh, not my jam. What are they called? Roguelike? Roguelikes? Yeah. Roguelikes. No, I mean, the problem is I play RPGs and I click through text really fast. Anybody watching me play is not going to get to read what happens. Like, I just click really, click through the text really, um, really fast. They're watching for us and the mistakes we're going to end up making because we're just going to die a lot and it'll be funny. I'm not dying. I'm reloading. Reloading. I'm reloading the same. <laughs> Scums, I, I say I'll do it with you for sure. Who would you make your character? Would you make it after a fantasy character? I mean, no. Oh, I'm playing as Carson Orlong. 100%. Barbarian. I hate barbarians. <laughs> Perfect. I hate barbarians. <laughs> Perfect. This is what we need. 
I hate them. I I hate they took away racial bonuses, which is weird. Like I don't really like now there's literally like there's no reason. I don't I don't really understand why they did it because it's it's kind of like materia with in Final Fantasy 7. Like the reason you picked the race you picked is because usually you picked it because of the stat bonuses that it gave you. This is why, um, you know, elves were more likely to be casters because they had, you know, bonuses to, to intelligence and decks. So they're more likely to be casters or thieves. Um, and then like the Goliaths are more likely to be like barbarians and fighters because they get the plus to con and strength. Um, and they took it all away. Um, I guess because some people were having to play races they wanted to and have subpar stats. Yeah, they probably the just want to open it up. Yeah, but that's the point. Like, if you don't want to min max the system, you play like an orc that gets minus intelligence as a as a caster. That's what makes it fun. Now there's no there's no disincentive at all. And so because of that, every D D party is a bunch of freaks instead of like like carefully chosen freakdom it's just like let's see how weird i can make my character as opposed to if i do this i will not be able to perform my skills as much anyway when i ran when i ran dnd i always had a very very and this sounds it's gonna found it's gonna sound like very like fantasy world like let me say it and then you'll know exactly how it sounds i had a very very strict no uh, uh punishment for not playing humans like i made it very difficult for people that didn't play humans i liked it when people played humans i didn't like it when people didn't play humans and so if you did play a non-human i you know just made your life a little difficult because i really liked human parties because i'm just like so how did so so now now since you since you don't care about the other people playing we have three humans and then the enormous dragon looking thing do you think <laughs> you've made their life easier or are now they going to have to deal with the fact that they have a dragon that they're tra that they're traveling around with like why don't you just be a human or someone that looks like a human so you can not make this difficult for everybody I did not enjoy playing non human uh, elves are obviously one thing but like elves are the worst race in fantasy what elves are just so elves are long lived right do you know how do you know how that translates into douchebags every elf is a douchebag because apparently if you live a long time the only like the only path you can take is giant douche every elf name an elf in fantasy elrond i'm sorry Jeez. what Jeez. you don't think elrond. elrond's a douchebag no so if they showed up and their their uh goals were not in line with elrond he would have he would have entreated with them and treated them with the utmost respect. And you kindness. like That's benevolent fun. dictators. That's like your thing. I know. I'm saying that Elrond isn't one. Are you though? Yeah. So you're saying he's too nice. Elrond's a fascist. You heard it here first. <laughs> oh, here we go. Pseudo fascist possible. Look, I think Tolkien's pseudo fascist. Um, you hate Tolkien. Like, let's just get it out of the way. Like, like I we joke about you hating Brandon Sanderson, but you really do. You really, do I do. Not. I hate Tolkien. I hate everything he's ever touched. I actually, I actually hate his entire family and estate. I, I petitioned. I actually petitioned the government um, uh, to damnatio memoriae him and strike his name from literally every record in history. Um, it's still in committee. Um, I'm going to hear back soon. Say something bad about Beowulf. Beowulf? Yeah. You mean like the Wattpad version of every better epic poem um, written in the ancient times? Philip just threw up in his teacup. Philip doesn't know what Wattpad is. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Did you just say he threw up in his teacup? <laughs> oh, you know he's drinking tea out of this little stupid cup and it has like floral blue around the rim. Yeah, exactly. Even smaller though. <laughs> He has weak fingers. Oh, <laughs> Jimmy, I feel so bad. Why? No one should watch this episode. I have done Alan. nothing but complain. Alan, we hit episode. a new, we hit a new high, highest ever concurrent viewer. We've never hit that number before. That's so. because Bridger and Murphy were in the comments. 
they do they do bring they do bring the cavalry with them which i always right. appreciate because it's hard to prop up these smaller episodes uh they just kill my ad <laughs> but we we in the smaller booktube community we do appreciate the outreach that you do <laughs> I claim it on my tax. I'm actually a community <laughs> service for a B and E I did in Florida. It's actually, <laughs> you have to fill out. You get your parole officer to sign the form, and you <laughs> and you did a chatting with nuts. Nuts with me, <laughs> Jimmy. You better not end this episode. Last time I tried to cut Alan off at two hours, he cussed me out. He said, "You son of a." <laughs> I've never cussed you out, Jimmy. You've cussed me out multiple times. I have never cussed you out. You know that's you know that's not true. Alan swears so much off stream, guys. That it's is crazy. That is not true. That is not true. He's like, can I? Can you believe all these stupid suckers watching Jeopardy? Jimmy. Okay. Okay. So no one watches Jeopardy. So again, Fact. like fewer people. Fewer people watch. Like I don't think you can add up all the views of Jeopardies and match the 45,000 views of people who have watched well by now i mean that was earlier today so it's probably like 50,000 views by now that have watched the number one chatting with nuts episode i am his dependent um i will tell you though and i i, I claimed out on my taxes last year. back back when back i used to swear a lot like i like wish you lot. still did I, I know you do. There was there was there was no there was no word that was not made better by an f bomb adjective mm. prior to it. Mm. Um, and I worked in dialysis, and I lived with my girlfriend and my roommate at the time, and they were playing WoW in the background. And one of my friends had come over and wanted to film me. And this is before I guess before reaction videos, because that's literally what it is. I just now realized this reaction video showed me Rebecca Black's Friday the video to that and i was watching it for the first time and i had to take it off the internet when i started teaching because i was like you can't have this on the internet and have my students be able to because the first year students were like i've seen i've seen your your friday video i'm like oh no because <laughs> I, it would i have many things to say about the rebecca black friday I mean, Rebecca Black, it is the greatest crime America has committed in the last 50 years is not making Rebecca Black the poet laureate of the United States. Um, because when you have lyrics like yesterday was yesterday was Thursday, today is Friday, tomorrow is Saturday and Sunday comes afterwards, like there are so few people who have the creative spark to come up with words that equal exactly what is happening in the music video. So they're at a party and then all of a sudden they're at a party and we see how the modern pastime of youths sitting up nigh standing in the backseat of a convertible nice. driving 80 miles an hour down a highway because you know only certain people are skilled enough to accomplish this uh anyway i cuss a lot in it and so i had to have it taken down no Can no no. i, I definitely this? know this i definitely know this amanda i i definitely know the 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 what is it like something music factory arc music factory that it's a complete sham and reginald that's a I don't know the, the 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 producer guy the the one of one of the producers for Art Music Factory the black guy in it I named him Reginald I didn't know what his name is but like it flashes to him while the song's going on and he's sitting there like 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 he's jamming out to Rebecca Black's Friday it's like no you're not Reggie like you're you do not think this is a banger like stop it I um, still listen to it every now and then no you do not I promise you can ask Kelsey I do that's on Friday a, I turn it up I turn it all the way up. I belled it out with old Rebecca, old Becky. Hope she's doing well. Big fan of the show. Appreciate her. She has, I've watched interviews with her and she has a, she has a good sense of humor about it these days, uh, which I like, but that is not a good song and it is not a good video. I think it, I think it has a little bit of a deeper meaning if, if you really look at it. Um, What's the deeper meaning of Reggie literally chasing the school bus filled with teenagers I think it's convertible. I think it speaks to the anxiety of preparation. And, you know, a lot of, you know, in a younger generation testing, standardized testing has really affected how kids see tests and, 
and the evaluation of their skills. And I think Rebecca was speaking to something about that and that longing for the weekend um, really resonates with me, Alan. Was that good? That was my best Philip you Chase. You need to be on NPR. We need to, we need to have a, we need to have a parody, deadly serious, like NPR <laughs> style radio show where we say things like what you just said, complete, like most of my, like I feel bad. Anybody who is on here who does not know me probably thinks that I have the worst opinion and I'm the giantest douchebag because everything I've said that is literally like kind of making fun of someone or poking at someone or trying to rile people up or <laughs> like I've said it completely deadpan. Like I have not in any way indicated yeah, delivery that, solid. Yeah, that those things are not true. Uh, but that's been most of my conversation tonight is saying things that I don't actually mean. So that was pretty good. That was good. That was excellent. You'd be you would do well at one of the at any kind of corporate training. I uh, I have been able to talk my way into many jobs, Alan. Um, that's... I'm not. I am awful. I am an awful job interviewer. Just awful. <laughs> Jake says, "I swear I'm not lying." I just opened up a uh, YouTube another tab, and your bloody way of kings video came up on the recommendations. Nice. At push boys, let's go. Uh, and I do not listen to Friday before chatting with nuts. Evie, she said uh, to get hyped. I listened to Family Ties by Baby Keem and uh, Kendrick Lamar. The Family that, Ties theme song. That's no, it's just called do? Family Ties, and it is a banger of a song. But My so God. is the Family Ties theme song. I mean, I believe you. I just don't remember it. Y'all know. I bet we've been together for a million years. And I bet we'll be together for a million more. It's not I started dreaming about that night we kissed. Can I get and I can't track? remember what I ever did before. Come on, everybody. You know it. What would we do, baby, without us? What would we do, baby, without us? I feel as if we if need to. No nothing. We can't love each other through what will we do, baby? <laughs> she does it every time I watch it. She hits the hoo-hoo. <laughs> we need to make a jingle for Chatting with Nuts. I've been Murphy, thinking about it. Again. If you like singing, Alan, you need to tune into a stream where my wife is on it. 90%. You guys do very well with the Disney songs. 90% really of streams that have my that have my wife on, uh, we are we are singing. Those um, are and also videos. I'm not raging all the time. I feel like people think that I am angrier than I actually am. I once like, had I, a commenter uh, re refer to you as the hemorrhoid with a mic. And I thought that was just. Hold on. Who said that? No, nah, I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> hemorrhoid with a mic. <laughs> I think that people think that I'm angrier than I actually am. Like, believe it or not, guys, the way that I talk on chatting with nuts when I'm indignant, I'm I'm indignant a lot of the time. That's true in my real life. But like, I'm not actually, I don't actually sound like this most of the time. Most of the time, I don't know. I don't know how to avoid it. I don't know. You're right. I'm a grouch and unpleasant to watch. No wonder no one watches it. If I could yeah. like talk positively about things that are popular, I might people might watch my thing. Or if I could sound like a scholar with an awesome voice, like Library Ladder, that's probably that's the thing. That's why there's so many like thirsty women watching it. <laughs> they just turn it on and fall to like they turn it on while they're sleeping, so they can have naughty dreams. I will tell you what happened. <laughs> naughty dreams. I don't think I'm occupying anyone's naughty dreams anymore, Alan. I think those days are not long you. Long. Library ladder, not you. They're not listening for <laughs> oh, you. Oh, well, they're I listening you for were... Bridger. Well, you know what's interesting about the video is like you can see what videos are recommending you, and a bunch of booktubers that don't do what we do, that have like millions of subs, it got on their videos. I think that's what happened. But they're they're. I think the reason why the audience is ninety percent women is because it's all female. Um, like booktubers I didn't know existed and they have millions of subscribers and I'm like uh, I didn't know who this was like the space is so big like we don't even have any idea of these channels that are massive which is I crazy. don't have any idea of what you're talking about because I've never one time looked about looked at how long how how many people the video reached and what is recommending it not even one I couldn't I could not find it right now if I had 
30 seconds to do it. I, uh, when something is some of us useful. do it for the love of the, of the love of the craft and not because of the analytics, like I'm not naming names, but not all of us do it for the numbers. Some of us just do it because we have a joy and a desire to, to meet other people and communicate about uh, shared likes. But then, I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's okay to look at the numbers too. I guess it's, it's fine to, to be a stats guy. Like that's fine. I personally am not one of them, but how noble of you. <laughs> I'm out here doing the Lord's work. Is it is it tough? Is it tough being so righteous? <laughs> it really is. Because if only, if only I if only I if only I did not have to hoist myself on my own petard. Like if only <laughs> carrying these burdens. <laughs> it is tough. It, I mean, it really is. It is it is tough being the one righteous man still left um there used to be more of us but slowly slowly the people i know they are talk about numbers and the algorithm evie says for someone who talks about doing it for the love of the craft someone sure does complain about others having more views than yeah life. jimmy gosh it's fine if your views stop. don't get a lot of subs or if your videos don't get a lot of views it's okay can't. jimmy make the stuff you want I personally love the combat code video. I'm sorry that it didn't, it's not up to snuff for you because enough people didn't watch it. But I mean, again, some of us care about how many people watch our streams or videos. I felt, bro, I felt so weird doing the cover reveal because I'd never done one. And like, I didn't know what to, like, I didn't know if I was supposed to go, ta da. Like, I didn't know what to do. So I think I just went, just look at it. <laughs> like, it's... I wanted a ta da. Someone told me there wasn't a ta da, so I didn't watch it. I'm not a ta da kind of guy. Yeah, I know. More of a da 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 da. You know, da 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 da. What? I, I just made it up. I, I was hoping maybe something would coincide with that in pop culture, but <laughs> I, uh, oh, yikes, this is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, what are you, what are, is, so you're, what else are you reading? Are you just Ooh. reading The New Sun? That was uh, a heck of a journey to get to that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm reading. Uh, I'm reading Book of the New Sun, two chapters a day. It's really, really good. I'm reading Prophet of a Dan, which is better than Book One, which so that's a relief. No, I'm just kidding, Philip. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm liking Book Two, and then uh, Anna Karenina. I'm reading every few days, and then I got Boy Parts, and that's all. That's all I'm going to read this month. I don't think I'm going to get to anything else. I did finish the second book in the Millennium trilogy by Stig Larson. Tremendous. Ah, so good. I'm, I I want to read more thrillers. I mean, make, making up books that no one that that don't exist like that. I mean, it doesn't like restore your hipster cred. Alan, your... there is nothing less hipster about this series. It sold ninety million copies. <laughs> Where in Lithuania? <laughs> it's an international. The girl with the dragon tattoo series. It oh, is wow. literally one of the most popular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you started, when you started, I was like, yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna get his ass right here. Whoops. Like, <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so I mentioned my rap. I'm like, you guys may have not have heard about this book that sold 90 million copies, but it's really good, surprisingly. All I gotta do is make a I was wrong about Stig Larson video, and it'll blow up like the only other two videos I've ever named like that. My my uh my patrons your one piece video my one piece video and my sanderson video yeah which i did not remember i named that because i don't really think about that video too often and then someone was like you should just name all your videos that you were wrong <laughs> you should you should uh, yes alex i'm gonna i'm gonna get my stay tuned for my every cosmere reference and every cosmere reference video um video uh, um, colt Colton is saying 4.5. I did give the book 4.5 because there was a plot convenience that kind of bothered me a bit in the story. And I also don't think the mystery is as good as book one. Girl of the Dragon Tattoo's mystery is fantastic. So good. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo? Not oh. in my house. <laughs> that was in, those are portals to hell. That's my grandpa. That's, that's Drunk Uncle from SNL. Have you seen Drunk Uncle? I have not. Who plays it? Bobby Moynihan when he was on it. It's one of my Oh, favorites. I haven't seen this. One of my favorite weekend update bits is Drunk Uncle. Oh, and I love weekend update. Do you really? I'm yeah. gonna send, I'm gonna send you some videos in. in um, oh, please do. Uh, they're, they're so good. They're so because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you know someone you know Drunk Uncle. Guaranteed, like guaranteed, guaranteed. I know, I know where where you're from and where you grew up. I promise, you know Drunk Uncle. 
I feel like I may have seen it because I've watched a lot of SNL back in the day. Like that Same. used to be my jam. Remember when I used to just rerun on cable like all Dude, day long? I used to DVR the crowd. Okay, so when um, like a lot of people say, and and I understand, and and really it's the the like Adam Sandler, like Dana Carvey, like that's there. They don't kind of like, anyway that era right there. Like a lot of people like really really like that era. I like the era that came like slightly after that. Like I really loved the Bill Hader, Will Forte, uh, Seth Meyers, Jason Sudeikis. Um, I really liked that era, and it's probably just because I watched it a lot. Like one of my like one of my favorite sketches is Virginica, which is you know, Keenan Thompson dressed up as this really booksome lady who married a rich guy and has her stepdaughter, and they're always going shopping, and you know they always. I don't know. Like the kid is always trying to buy like booty shorts or something. And <laughs> the, and the, the like store clerk is like, well, you, uh, you, you really want your daughter to go out wearing those? Like mama, why you won't let me buy my booty shorts? And Keenan goes, why can my baby get her booty shorts? And he's just like this big buxom woman. And it's ridiculous. Anyway, if you know Virginia, you know it, but also drunk uncle with uh, Bobby Moynihan. And if anybody knows the Bobby Moynihan sketch where he was, um, this waiter with like a bandana and he was talking about it smells like pepper up in here it is not a funny sketch at all but i cannot stop laughing at it like i acknowledge it's not funniness but i can't stop laughing at me at it please tell me that you've seen the it's pepper up in here anyway andy sandberg was also in that thing because i say that to tell you this when matt and i live together um we would record Saturday Night Live every every night. And when the Michael Bolton, Captain Jack Sparrow, Lonely Island digital short dropped, you know what I'm the song I'm talking about? The Michael Bolton, This is the Tale of Captain Jack Sparrow? I have not seen it. Every, we, we did not delete the episode. And every single day, at least once a day, and this went on for like six months, we would play, we would go, and we would fast forward to that to that section of the DVR, and we would watch that repeatedly and i don't know why it's so funny i don't like i don't i don't know why we liked it so this is the tale of captain jack sparrow exactly so exactly see amanda knows amanda why are we not friends you should be friends with amanda should, she's I, great amanda has I mean, she knows amanda is uh one of the people who has very similar reading taste to me um, very few things. Well, even when we split on things, I think we always can see each other's points, but, um, she loves the new red rising book. What I meant is that we need to talk more, Amanda. That's what I meant. I miss her. <laughs> a pirate so babe under seven seas. You should have a, a man on jeopardy. That would be good. Dang. I should. I also, because she's read so many like unique books that like it'll be funny to see who you compare with her who have read all the books that she's read. <laughs> a lot of it's trying to avail. I'm able. Well, I'm I'm glad the new um punching people before they eat a sandwich. Yeah, I like the um. I have heard that the new Red Rising book is good. I have not yet read it. I've heard it's really good as well, and uh, the FOMO is real, dude. I won't lie. The FOMO is real, but I, I, when Red God comes out, I think I'm going to reread the original trilogy. Um, and you should read it with me. And you me? can tell me all the, yeah, because you can tell me all the Roman references <laughs> that I don't, I die, I just don't get. You, you heard, you heard it, you heard it here first, guys. So when, uh, he reads the trilogy and I don't read it, you can be like, you said you're going to read it with me. I'll be like, yeah, Duff Man says a lot of things. So. <laughs> I was going to ask you, um, cause we were talking about horror movies earlier. I forgot about this. Uh, other than King, you haven't read a lot of horror, right? Like horror books. Who else writes horror books? Oh, Lovecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Lovecraft. Thomas read... Ligotti. Uh, you have Stephen Graham Jones. Who's fantastic. I don't know. I don't know what he is. I've read Lovecraft. We should find a horror book to read together. Why? I think that'd be a short one. We should do a short horror book or uh, you know what I love short story uh, horror, like a collection. No, that'd Austin, we're, we're, we're tight too. We should do that. I guess there's October. not a whole bunch of um horror books. Yeah, I, I haven't read much horror book at all. I've read Stephen King. I think that's basically it. No, no. I've read Great Value Brand Horror. I've read 
horror light. I've read plenty of Dean Kuntz. Dean Kuntz. I actually never read one of his uh, books. I've read Stephen Graham Jones, by the way, for the people in the chat mentioning him. I, I like I uh, Only Good Indians was fantastic, I thought. Very there strange. A, there's a Dean Kuntz book that has... And I read it in a night because it's back when I, I would read these mystery books in like a night. I read it is about a character who is allergic to the sun. He has some weird thing that is allergic to the sun. And I read the whole thing in a marina. And so everything, whole thing takes place at night. And there are like genetically engineered like chimpanzees in it that are like evil, I guess. <laughs> and it was it was weird. Like it was so weird. Has anybody read that? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I anybody? don't I have no idea. It kind of sounds interesting though, to be honest. It was wild. Like when I read those books, I read them because they're just so easy to, you know, they're just easy to read. I love easy to read things. Um okay. sometimes. I'm gonna set this up. Fear so nothing! Amanda! How does Amanda know all this? Yes, fear nothing. And I read the sequel. I don't know what the sequel's called, but there's Scared a sequel with the same guy. What? You literally scared the shit out of me. Oh. I don't know why. It scared me so bad. Jimmy, fear nothing. All I'm right. so sorry. Like, I did. I, dang. Did you look that up? Did you pull that out of nowhere? Amanda, what the crap? Dude, she's she's a wizard. Or can is wizard a male? I don't know. Anyways. Um, is there, Hermione's a wizard, isn't she? You're a wizard, Harry. Um, so here's the thing. People in the comments after after the stream, drop a book that is 200 pages or less in a horror book. And me and Alan will read it in October and we'll do a discussion about it and we'll dress up in Halloween costumes. Alan, what do you think? I think I didn't agree to any of that. Sounds great. I'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what you have to do with me. You just have to ignore what I'm saying and pretend like I said the thing you wanted me to say and just plow right through it. Um, <laughs> just, just, just ham fist my way into that. Seriously, just, just act like you don't even hear me. Like, just, just go with, go with, with whatever. Yeah, I never thought about the lack of I, horror books. I, I, I like horror books. Every time I read one, I go, man, this is great. I should probably like actually do this again. And then I just don't. I read. I've read domestic thrillers, and they're not good. I have read two of them, and both of them are not great. Um, one of them is very stupid, but I liked. And one of them is very stupid, and I didn't like. Yeah, I they're they're usually stupid, right? Yes, they they are my version of your hot girl summer books or whatever. I love the idea of reading Night Flyers, by the way. That's uh, George R. R. Martin's book, and a lot of people really, really love it. And it's very short. Oh, but I think it's more like science fictiony. Um, for what I know, I have a copy of it. I have an old, old copy somewhere. Oh, domestic thrillers are books where it's like the husband and wife and they have a secret because like the husband is secretly like controlling her and keeps her locked in a dungeon or is a murderer um, on this. It's it's that's that's what domestic thriller is. It's always like a married couple that seem perfect on the outside. But little does anybody know what happens at the at, you know, at home. Fancy watch this domestic throw makes it sound like someone's freaking out that dinner is going to be burned or something. Sometimes, sometimes the dude is like uber controlling and hates that stuff. One that I read, Jimmy, it is so dumb. It is so dumb because like the lady's trying to escape from her husband, right? And she thinks that yeah. she's escaped from her husband in like, I don't know, wherever they, oh, they, like he's taken her like to Thailand or something. And he, he's gone out and so she thinks she's, she's escaped. And so he, he, she, she escapes and she listens to this like, like room next door to where she's like escaped to. And she hears a Hispanic family inside. Like she, like it says multiple times, she hears a Hispanic family, like talking in Spanish inside. And it turns out, and I'm not saying what book it is, but it's a spoiler. It, I mean, not really, but you don't know what book it is. It turns out, Jimmy, the Spanish family that she heard secretly her husband. Her husband was in there, knew that she was going to do that, was pretending behind the door to be a whole Hispanic family, not just a Hispanic dude. A whole, it beggars belief, Jimmy. It <laughs> beggars belief. It That's is actually so, the ending to Saw 7. That's actually. I mean, 
I'm not sure that that, that that James Wan didn't write this book because that's how <laughs> ridiculous it is. Um, and I love it because like, if you're going to be that stupid, you might as well go for broke. Like, it, <laughs> like, like, like I, I admire the cut of that author's jib that they did something so beyond the pale, unbelievable that oh, it's just like, Oh, you're right. Like, you're right. I can easily reproduce the sounds of an entire Hispanic family enough to fool my college educated wife. <laughs> I love it. It's ridiculous. Oh my God. Um, Sammy's pack uh, says the sundown motel is not super scary. It's spooky though. Simon St. James, my wife bought this uh, last year and I read the synopsis and I was like, Oh, I'm going to read that. And I think it's pretty short. So that could be a good one. I would really, maybe 250 pages is more a reasonable ask, but I'm trying to keep it on the low end for old, you know, skinny you stacks should, over you here. You should make it a short story then. I'm going to start calling you skinny stacks. I kind of like that. You're not going to call me that. I think I will. I won't answer to it. All right. I won't call you that if you start calling me Yimmy. I'm not calling you Yimmy. Something's got to give here, brother. I, <laughs> listen. No. I'm being so unreasonable. I know. It's 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 frankly Fill up. Yeah. Fill up. Fill up. Philip Chase. I just want you to respond, and you don't have to be in a long way. I want you to tell me about the doctoral thesis yes. defense scene. Because that was when I immediately was like, okay, I love this book. Um and I was like, I, I was so, I, I was just enraged. Like I was, I like uh, uh, Jimmy knows I messaged him immediately. It was, yeah. So I just need you to comment on the doctoral thesis scene. It's one of my favorite scenes in fiction. It should but, be, it, it should be the most boring scene. That's that what I was about to cap about it. It When should. I say that people are going to think that it's some mind breaking, never before seen. It's not, don't, don't expect anything from it. It should be the biggest snooze fest because, oh, my gosh, it the is. dumb, like, freaking 18th century poetry terminology they're using. Uh, like, I should want to die. Like, I should want to die. But it is so good. I don't know what that means, Philip. Does that mean you liked it? Or does that mean you're going to be like, that was actually my least favorite scene in the whole book? If Philip tries to uh, flex the, I, I'm a little unimpressed by this, of course. <laughs> and then I'll have to just... He's going to be like, like, I think, um, I think, uh, I think John Williams is, is an okay writer, but I really don't think there's any, I don't really think there's any thematic content. I think it's more like a, of a popcorn blockbuster. I'll burn it on live TV. I will burn it <laughs> on live TV. Just throwing, throwing that out there, Philip, no big deal or anything. Um, yeah, starter's fantastic. I think about it probably once a week. And I always feel weird recommending it because I'm pretty sure people probably have read it and just not told me and been like, this sucks. It is, in fact, not about a stoner, which I was a little disappointed by. But, you know, I didn't want to read it because I thought it was about a stoner. I don't I like wanted reading, to read it because I, I don't like it. reading books where there's a whole where's a bunch of like drug addicts. Like you don't like the movie Friday. I believe it or not, I've seen Friday next Friday and Friday after next. You better love them all. I, I mean, I will say that I don't hate them. How are you going to get fired on your day off? <laughs> what are you trying to do? Build a clubhouse? Dude, Friday is the funniest movie ever. I I did not hate Friday. I did not hate Friday. Bro, it's so good. Now, I'm going to be super pretentious right now. Okay. And I got another copy of my one of my favorite movies, which is The Emperor's Club. And if anybody, if you've never seen The Emperor's Club, it's it's... If you even if you go look it up and read what it's about, you'll be like, this is the most Allen movie that has ever Alan in the in the history of existence. And it's it's so good. Like, it's so good. Um, and my new DVD has deleted scenes. And so I was just like my wife heard me like as if I won the lottery, how excited I was that this thing had deleted scenes. And it has director's commentary, which I have not yet gotten to watch. I haven't gotten to watch the director's commentary on it yet. And I'm so excited because it's my favorite movie ever. Um, and But if you ever need to know about me as a person, you should watch The Emperor's Club because it's like, I don't know. Like, it's like, it's like, sure. it's, I don't know. It's just, it's, it. It moves me every time I watch it too much. Dead Poets Society is not even close to superior, Evie. Dead Poets Society is lame. Dead Poets Society pretends to be profound, but isn't. 
Um, but everyone is fooled into thinking it's profound. Oh, so that's Kevin what I have to say about that. I'll, I'll watch this. I'll watch this. I've never seen it. I don't know. <laughs> I think you will hate it. <laughs> really? Why? I mean, no, you don't hate a lot of things. I don't, I don't know because it's, I don't know because it's pretentious and it's. I went and saw the Green Knight in theaters and enjoyed it. You know how many people? Oh, boom! Them? You yeah. might like it. You might like it. That's fine. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I really. In fact, I would say that I do kind of trend more towards that in in movies. To be honest, you know what's sad? I feel like sci-fi movies always sound so cool, and then I watch it. I'm not talking about Dune. I'm talking about like the middle of the road ones. Every time I watch them, I'm like, this is disappointing. Like they missed the point of sci-fi. You know what's a good movie? Sunshine. I love Sunshine. You know what that is? Hold on. My dog is trying to get out the door. I don't want her to pee everywhere. Christina. I think Sophia might have to pee. Okay. Why do I announce it to the thousands of people watching at home, Alan? Jeez. Embarrassing. I mean, it's not a baby. It's a dog. Huh? Well, you know, they have feelings too, bro. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, by the way, Alex, I agree with you. That was my first theater experience since COVID, and I enjoyed it. I understands. I understand why people don't like it, though. I they did bait and switch in the um, trailer, in my opinion. <laughs> so, Demi Drek, the reason we're still going is because the only thing I have is duration. That's all I have. Like, I can't. I can't bring in the big views. So the only thing I have is the fact that it is long um, and that it, you know, there's more content because if I can't provide quality, I want to provide quantity. So yeah, Alan's much more of a uh, quantity over quality guy. Always has I mean, been. I mean, my videos are neither. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you, Tell me what it was like to to interview Daniel Abraham. That that was actually genuinely exciting to to break the being grumpy thing. Yeah, it's the um, most happy I've seen you in a long time. That was it was like it was so fun. Like because um I don't know if y'all follow Daniel Abraham on Twitter, but he said he's like he he he's he does not seem to me as the most approachable person online because he's always I mean he's always very up in arms about something in the political spectrum which i get like it's it's hard if you follow politics not to get up in arms about stuff um and so that's it's just always difficult to um approach someone like that and i haven't seen a bunch of interviews because i don't think he does a, a ton that i've seen so i haven't like i didn't know like you know he doesn't he doesn't project from his twitter persona like please come and talk to me um but he's super nice and i actually owe i actually owe it to someone i forget who I need to go look. I don't know what their YouTube name is, but um, on Twitter, they Daniel Abraham, I think, was talking about Blade of Dream coming out. And this guy linked like 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 commented on Daniel Abraham's Twitter saying you should totally have an interview with. And then he tagged me Library of Alexandria before um, Blade of Dream comes out. And I said, oh, my gosh, that would be freaking awesome. I'm like, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to email. I'm going to email and try to set that up because I found his email on his website. And he said, and then Daniel Abraham commented on my tweet and said, don't email me at that one. Um, I don't check that one. Email me at this one. I'm like, Daniel Abraham saw my tweet. <gasps> and so I um, emailed him and we set it up. And he was like, are you? I was like, thanks for doing this. Like, are you kidding? Like, it's a chance to talk about myself for two hours. Like, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I, I get that. Respect. <laughs> um, and again, usually, usually when he's talking to people, the interviews I have seen, people talk about the expanse. Like that's what people want to talk about. They want to talk about the expanse. And I get it. It's uh, get you know, it. a nine book series and a book of uh, and a and a uh novella or book short stories or whatever, and like five seasons of a TV show. So I mean, I get that, but I haven't read any of those. And um, you know, my thing is um you know, my thing is his, is his solo works. And so I got to talk to him and it was, it's so exciting because I, I really do love his, um, I really do love his work. Like I just do. And I don't know why it just, it just hits different for me. I understand why other people don't like, if other people don't like it, I do get it. Like I'm again, I seem unreasonable, but I'm not. So, um, so yeah, he was just really, really nice and really, really like 
receptive to just like, hey, I'm going to go through literally all, all three of your fantasy series and we're going to talk non-spoiler and spoiler about all three. So if you've read any of Abraham's fantasy, you can go, even if you haven't, you can go watch all three of the non-spoiler sections. He is a very, very, very intelligent guy and has a lot of really cool things to say about, um, did you really, Mike? I didn't know that. I know you just read like, did you know this, Jimmy, that Mike just blazed through the entire dagger and coin like in the last two weeks? I saw him mention it somewhere uh, online and I wanted to know how he felt about it. Did you because... like it? Did you like it, Mike? Um, there's a well, anyway, if you watch the interview, you know, you know, my thoughts about it. But um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. But like he just has a lot of really cool things to say with the way he approaches stuff and uh, the way he approaches writing. And, um, and so, yeah, so really nice guy. So that was, that was really cool. Um, getting to talk to Kate, to Tom Holt slash KJ Parker would be another one, but again, he doesn't do video stuff because he doesn't have internet in the, the 18th century field he lives in, in, yeah. the, in the UK. Um, but one day, one day I want to talk to him. Um, and then the other big one would be Terry Pratchett, who I can't talk to because I'm not a necromancer because it's a stupid class to choose. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, so, I mean, that's really, that's, that's really the big one. Um, what would be awesome, what would be the ultimate scoop really is if somehow because of you. my connection with, no, my connection with, with Daniel Abraham, now the connection because he and I are best friends now, I was able to talk to Germ on my channel and I would make sure that I didn't even tell you I was having it so that you found out from someone else that I was talking to Germ live. And don't worry, don't worry. It still wouldn't have 45,000 views. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, the difference between me, you and Alan is I would, I would text you and say, congratulations, my friend. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. Success. Would you, I would, I would declare holy war on you. No, I would definitely. I would be excited. I yeah, would dude, not. My, my one of my best friends is interviewing my favorite author. I, I would amazing. curse your name until you died. I would. <laughs> that's so intense. I would rather it be you than anybody else. Well, Jimmy. Other than maybe Bridger Jimmy, and Murphy. Now you're but, making me look bad with your magnanimity. Well, that is the 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 dynamic that we have. I am throwing praise upon you and promoting you, and I made a one piece video, and you didn't talk to me for a month. That's not true. I have no, it's not. But it since sounded we bad. have been friends, I have never gone a month without talking to you. No, we talk about every day, <laughs> roughly. <laughs> so yes, yes, Eric, I'm starting a podcast with Germ. It's going to be oh, a weekly podcast. We're going to call it. We're going to call it uh, the Bendiest Knee. <laughs> uh, Sam said Dominic Noble got the inter got the interview. Yes, he did. I don't and know who that is, so I'm not. He's another booktuber that you don't know of. Well, are he, you serious? He does, he does a lot of adaptation stuff, but yeah, he's huge. He's massive. Um, I was envious of Dom, but also very excited for him. I mean, I couldn't imagine that. Well, I'm going to interview him. I'll be like, look, I also like sailing, and I'll get a little sailor hat, and then we'll be best friends. And I'll be like, you know what, Germ? You take your time, George. Take your time. <laughs> you can't rush brilliance. He would love me because I would just want to talk about Fever Dream and Tugboats, and he'd be like, this is the greatest internet. I wouldn't even ask him about A Song of Ice and Fire. That, really that would probably be the most refreshing thing he's ever had happen to him in his life. He would love it. And I would also bring up Roger Zelazny, and then he would probably be like, he'd be so pumped. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what, Jimmy? If he ever agreed to an interview with me, I would just send you the link and sub you in i'll just be like this is my name is jimmy nuts here you, do you go think he would do you think he would take issue with the bobby b picture why would he take issue with that you have a picture of a character that he wrote i would do the most like cringe thing ever and i would have bobby b ask him questions and i would cut the clips in to the thing and people would be like this is so cringy and germ would be very uncomfortable but i would love it <laughs> what if this TK? What if I got a an arc of Winds and Winter before you? Winds. winds okay, winter. that would that would that would tilt me a little bit. I think that what would if, tilt me. What if I got an arc before you and I read it in the day and I spoiled it for you? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, like, I put, like not little, like major spoilers. I would you. bury you. I would <laughs> bury you, know what, Jimmy, you in the needle. I would go to my things. grave accepting that because that is the only acceptable course of action if that happened like 
I deserve <laughs> death. I think I think that is actually a capital offense in most countries. I I would have feel no regrets. And I then- cannot believe how angry I would be if I waited this long for this book. Because the thing is, I don't want that spoiled either. Remember, I also oh. am a Song of Ice and Fire fan. Obviously not as big as you, but I would be infuriated if I waited that long and had that spoiled. Same thing, if someone had spoiled the end of Dark Tower for me, after, like while I've been waiting this many years to freaking read that series, I, like there's no coming back from that. That would enrage me. It would enrage me. If there ever is a time where Wins a Winner is coming out and there's arcs, which I don't even think he needs to do arcs. <laughs> like, he definitely does not need to do. We're not sure if it's going to perform. Like, yeah, right. Uh, that I will disappear off book. I, I've said that before, but I really mean it. I will disappear. We're, go- we're both going to the cabin, Jimmy. We're going and we're going to gonna film, a, we're gonna film a, a vlog. I literally know where we would go. That too. would be so fun. That would I be have so a fun. cabin picked out. And a uh, very nice little town. It would be a lot of fun. It would be a lot of fun, actually. Do you know what I want Gurm to do? I don't want Gurm to publicize when the book's coming out at all. I want someone one day to just walk into a bookstore and it's just on the shelf. Like there was no notice that it was coming out and someone finds it. And it's like, it's like someone finding the last, it's like Charlie finding the last golden ticket to the Wonka factory in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And that last, like that last piece of, of Wonka bar. Like that's what it would be like. It'd be like, finding the freaking that's what he should do he should just release five into the wild i've left these at five in five random places you know good luck geocachers and everybody goes and tries to find the five copies the only thing i can take away from that is that grandpa joe was a complete grifter and stayed in bed for years and made his i'm sorry but i was i was freaking bedridden i was no long weight bearing for 10 weeks and couldn't walk freaking grandpa joe has been in that bed for years and let his family starve. <laughs> what a freaking layabout! And they oh go, "Hey, my. you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a lollipop." And he was like, "Get it?" Da, 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 da. I never thought that <laughs> I could fly over the moon in ecstasy. Yeah. But nevertheless, I'm sitting there. Like, no, go go get me. your ass in line and get a job. That's right. Go to go to freaking work, Grandpa Joe. Oh, you do day. have clothes that aren't your moo moo. <laughs> you know he smelled bad. There's no way he didn't. Four people. In one bed facing each other? How does that even work? Oh. You know, I'm sorry, mean. but Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is superior to any kind of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Any kind. And freaking Timothy Chalamet as Wonka. Sorry, all you okay. thirsty ladies. Okay. Timothy okay. Chalamet as Wonka. I do not give two craps about Timothy yeah, he's Chalamet. All tradies. He can do no wrong now. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Get out of here. He can do no wrong except try to make a Wonka movie. Sorry, you're not Gene Wilder. He's better. I'm sorry, what? Gene Wilder's a hack. Gene Gene Wilder from Willy Wonka? Yeah, he's a hack. Okay, so I don't know if you're aware of this, but like the 23rd Amendment of the Constitution actually prevents <laughs> what you just said. Like free like the First Amendment protects free speech, but not that. You're not allowed to shout fire in a crowded theater. You're not allowed to slander Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka. Um, you're not allowed to um, not like Taylor Swift's 1989 album. Um, and oh, there's God. a couple other things, I think. You, so your speech is, is, is free, but it's not that free. Like we're, 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 not an, we're not an army of bar, like, a, like a country of, of barbarians. Name, name one thing Gene Wilder has in his repertoire that Vin Diesel doesn't. <laughs> I, I'll already give you one. Vin Diesel played D&D. I would love to see Willy Wonka as chocolate, as, 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 uh, sorry, Vin Diesel as Willy Wonka. <laughs> uh, we're a family here. <laughs> we're a family. They we're a family. No, 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 don't touch the, don't touch the chocolate river. Oh, no, don't, don't do it. Uh, triple X, pitch black. Ooh, you know my man. favorite thing? I actually like pitch black, by the way. Just put pitch it black is, black. is the best of the Vin Diesel movies. Chronicles of Riddick. I loved it too. Um, I, you know, the best thing about Hollywood was, was Vin Diesel being the jacked guy and a wife beater. And then the rock came in and everyone was like, Oh, everyone. No, like none of you are actually all that in shape because next to the rock, it's absurd. Like it's my favorite thing that then Vin Diesel became like 
obtainable. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I could look like that one. Didn't day. Vin Diesel and The Rock have some kind mm-hmm. of like they got beef? Eat. And that's why The Rock says, I'm never doing any more. And now he's doing Fast it. And Furious. And then he's doing it because you got to gotta get your bag, uh, The Rock. Yeah, the uh, Black Adam failed pretty hard. Pretty hardcore. Though that's more, in my opinion, of a DC issue. It, it is. is like mess. Like people saying, like anyone not expecting a DC film to bomb is foolish they just don't have the vision and they're trying to do it now but there's they're like telling people what they're going to do and it's like can we just like wait for the movie to get released that'd be kind of cool like i don't need to know your 17 year plan it's fine philip wants me to include a vin diesel in in his book be like hey so so this is yoraman now in in a uh, way of a dan uh so uh hey, how you doing? we gotta catch uh when you're when you're part of the the way of a dan your family so uh we gotta go make sure we catch day raven so you know because he's he's a fake prophet let's go you know uh let me go and hold on i gotta attend to this my lady friend here family would you say you live your life a quarter mile at a time yes (laughs) <laughs> jimmy i am neither fast nor furious so you're furious i think you're furious you're not oh, fast. That's, that's probably true that's fast as you ever were when you were on the wheels back when that's you were in the air bloodla were... we're family we're family bloodla do you ever miss being in the wheelchair no hmm. not even a little bit the only thing i miss about being in the wheelchair is the fact that i didn't have to i didn't have to get up and go pee i could literally just pee when i wanted to the pee jug i didn't like the pee jug Christina hated the pee jug. Oh, That's Kelsey it. hated the pee jug. Christina! I'm going back on the pee jug. Do you hear me? Somebody clip. <laughs> That's a new soundboard. <laughs> did, you, did you hear me? She must not have heard me because she'd have come in. No, she's she's going to the courthouse to divorce you. Is, is what's happening? She I know. Said, I know where the P, the P jug is, and I'm just I'm not I'm not even gonna. Ask. Oh dang it, she's there. I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> and I like that she said that because literally, did you know in Italy in like colleges, if like a, a a professor gives you like a bad grade on your paper, you can say I refuse. You can literally just say no. Like I refuse that grade, and they have I'm to do like, that with my taxes this year. I refuse. You should. I refuse. Um, so I know where the P jug is. So I'm just gonna get it, and I'm I'm not even gonna ask her if I can use the P jug. I'm I'm just I'm just gonna like play. I'm just gonna use the P jug and be like Christina, can you empty this for me. Kelsey uh, said it was very triggering for her when she would just hear like the liquid on the plastic sound. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I get yeah. it. I get this it. is disgusting. What, uh, <laughs> Eric Lewin says they will need them playing BG3. We will indeed be poop socking uh, BG3. No, what? what did you say? Poop socking. You're a wild WoW player. <laughs> uh, yes, but I don't know what that is. I think you can put two and two together here. I t- is that a real thing that people do? Have you never seen the South Park episode? I mean, a long time ago. <laughs> Man. Christina! Did you throw away the pee jug? <laughs> don't worry. She won't take the trash out. I'll literally go get out of the trash when I'm done. I, um, I, don't, I don't hate Joe Abercrombie. Why do you say I hate Joe Abercrombie? You said that him and Gene Wilder were hacks. <laughs> no, I did not. Oh, I, I do miss I do miss my graboid, Philip. I do miss my graboid. No, don't worry. Christina won't take out the trash, so it'll be there when I'm done. <laughs> um, but... Uh, I don't hate Joe Abercrombie. Who said that? I enjoyed. Uh, Alan enjoys Joe Abercrombie more than he'll let us know. I that's my belief. That's my booktube conspiracy. Is that Alan wishes he didn't like it as much as he did? But first law is enjoyable for him. I thought you were gonna have the pee jug. I was excited. Oh, hold on. I'm I'm awful parched. Hold on. I hope you spill it. refreshing warm and flat <laughs> John Smith said need neck beard and no life for this Jack. <laughs> oh this has gone completely off the rails <laughs> this is not how I imagined this going I, uh, I I had plans I had activities 
I most certainly did not give Akatar more stars than the Blade itself. I gave Blade itself four stars, and I acknowledged... You gave the Wolf five stars. I acknowledged on my video that if I reread it, it would probably be five stars, just like the Wolf. I like the Wolf. I mean, I like the Wolf. It's fine. It's a little bit convenient, but... All right, Alan. We're gonna we're gonna and we're gonna have to call it a show there. For what, Jimmy? Have you not eaten dinner? Why don't you eat dinner before these? I ate a little bit of dinner, but I have oh sushi. My God. And you can't wait to let sushi get too, you know. Grab your poop sock, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were poop socking the winner winner wins a winner. Just remember. Oh no, Colton. Oh, Colton's right. I mean that that checks out. That checks out. He did recommend Abercrombie immediately, and I have not read it. That makes That's me true. like Daniel Abraham even more than I already did. Yeah, he, lo- he loves Abercrombie for sure. All good writers do. Does Gurm like Aber- Abercrombie? Oh, yeah. Does yeah. he really? How do you know? Oh, yeah. You don't huh? know. You don't know. Joe Abercrombie wrote the intro to Game of Thrones in the Folio Society edition, and it's an awesome intro. It's very, very good. Um, and also, Joe Abercrombie has a polo shirt of Gurm's face all over it. That he is worn, and it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. That just means that Abercrombie likes Germ. That doesn't mean that Germ likes that. If <laughs> if if Germ wore a Joe Abercrombie polo, no, Germ Germ endorsed. Uh, you think he said it's grimdark as it ought to be written? I think <laughs> just blew a snot bubble with that one. Oh my god, I'm <laughs> sure he did. Grimdark as it ought to be written. I'm pretty sure. Oh, look at this. Evie said first time and only one that I've watched from start to finish. Well, congratulations. Welcome to the club. Fake fan. Fake fan. Alan, when's the next Jeopardy for everyone to know? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what a blow um, spot. I, I, I don't even know who the contestants are. This is um, like whenever someone wins a big fight in the UFC and they go, who would you like to fight next? And they go, oh, I'll take uh, anyone they want to give me. I'm down to fight anywhere, anytime. They call out somebody, you idiot. See, you know what, Jimmy? No one watches Jeopardy, so I don't really have any incentive to do it. Ooh, three dollar super sticker and Streamyard still doesn't show me what they are, so I have to open up the stream real quick. I, I hate that. Them. Why does it do that? I think it's just hard for them. Trey's Kushranada. Sorry, I still had that pulled up, and I saw it, and I remembered it again. Shit out of me. Oh my god, it's like a it's a corgi, I think, or a fox. Is it a corgi or a fox? Either way, it's adorable. I would like to have a corgi at some point in my life. My aunt, oh. my 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 wife's uh, aunt has a corgi. Two corgis. Is it bad? I heard they're really misbehaving. No, one of them is really sweet, and one of them is awful. Yeah, I heard it's a it's a lottery. It's kind of like a Targaryen. They kind of flip a coin every time a corgi gets shot out. I thought it was a cat. It might be a cat. No, I it's not a eyes. cat. It's a corgi. It's a corgi. <laughs> and dark arts. Folks. I cannot folks, believe Amanda knew fear nothing. Dude, Amanda I'm so everything. impressed by that. Amanda knows everything. <laughs> Amanda paid you to end the stream. <laughs> Amanda, I thought what the, what the what the flick? I thought we were I thought we were making headway, and here I have you have made Jimmy in the stream. Alan, tell people where they can find you on the internet. You can <laughs> go back a month, try to find my most recent video. Um, so we didn't talk about this at all. I thought we were going to talk about BookTube some, and we were we were going to talk about our woes that we were having. I forgot that we. I wanted to do that. I completely this is forgot. Re- reignite ignited the flame. This is exactly. Did you, did, did you like? Does that ever happen to you? Like, I have a bunch of stuff I want to talk about, and then as soon as we're on stream, I forget yes. all of it. A hundred percent. Anyway, if you want more content from me, I do run reading sprints, and if you don't know what that is, or you think it's lame, I mean it is. But um, <laughs> it's people. It's just watching people do work. But you you can skip those parts. Um, in between. I talk a lot, and honestly, that is where you will find out more of my thoughts on books than anything else. Um, I tend to talk about the stuff on that. I I don't know why. I'm having a real difficult time like actually just filming stuff, like talking to a camera. I think I just do better talking to people, and I think that's true, like in my class too. Like I like I like talking to people who can talk back. Um so yeah, that's where. As as one one commenter said on my last TBR, I was like, 
like most of your best content is on those streams. I'm like, I, I agree. Most of the best things I say are on those. Um, that's where you'll find discussions of all, of all kinds. Who knows what I'll be indignant about during the day or at any point during that. So most likely the school system. Most often likely. it's often, often the school system. Um, but, uh, but yeah, library of Alexandria, you can go find my, my videos and stuff. Um, and yeah, you know, you can talk me <laughs> down off the ledge when I'm like, you know what? Today's the day I quit booktube. Um, and no one ever sees me ever again. And you know what? One day, if that happened a couple months from now, six months from now, people be like, whatever happened to the six most popular guest on chatting with nuts? <laughs> so I can't wait to make that book two video. <laughs> the tragic rise and fall of the library of Alexandria. Be like e, 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 uh, the E channels behind the music. Yes, that's like, exactly like, what I want. Everyone, he was one of the one of the early uh, of the class of 2020, one of the early people with a discord and everyone hung out with him. And then all of a sudden, little did he know, every booktuber and all of their little siblings had their own discord server and no one talked to Alan anymore. And so he turned to drugs, his drug of choice, boring JRPGs that no one's ever heard of. Yeah, he was just really difficult to work with. Flashes <laughs> <laughs> to the talking head. Yeah, like I mean, yeah, Alan was a good choice when there weren't a lot of choices. But once, like, once like more people started doing it, we realized that oh, we were settling. It's really kind of like Plato's uh, allegory of the cave, where you really think the shadows are all there is, and then you see what actual booktube content is like. And so we just kind of went in that direction. And Marcus Aurelius said it best in meditations. It's just, of, course, <laughs> of course someone's going to quote meditation. <laughs> oh my God. Alan, I love you. Thanks for being here, buddy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks for having me, Jimmy. Hey guys, thanks for joining in the chat. If you were here from start to finish, I am so sorry that you, you had to witness lot. the, um, the, <laughs> the devolution of um, an old man's mind. <laughs> the early onset dementia yeah uh, i don't love plato did you know plato is not his real name his real name's aristocles plato means fatso and it was given to him by his wrestling coach i, I don't know if any of that's true but it is 100 like no, that's completely true you were really his, his real name <laughs> you're right <laughs> never mind i wasn't there <laughs> it might be true <laughs> Rome didn't actually happen, guys. Hey, thank you guys so much. <laughs> I hate that woman. I love it. I hate <laughs> that my favorite woman. conspiracy. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hit like on this so it can maybe reach the algorithm a little better and Alan can become maybe the fifth biggest guest on the show. It's going to be a <laughs> tough sell for the masses, though. Uh, but we genuinely appreciate you guys being here and always being the greatest third guest. And uh, yeah, I just I appreciate everything. And uh, I love you all very much. So until I see you next time, be good, be safe. And remember to always keep grabbing stuff with the graboid. Yep, that's that's the line you got.